Reddit is like the new age Tumblr. Yeah, it is. Tumblr is like um like a, a code you have to crack. Tumblr and then like Reddit's even worse. Yeah. So everyone's like, oh, just go to Reddit. And I'm like, well, Tumblr was the original spot for you to go and find. Yeah. You know what I'm so saying? So it makes sense that Reddit's like the new age version of yeah. it. But it's just like. I heard somewhere they're impossible. bringing back. Pull that mic closer right. to your mouth. Keep it like a fist away from your no. chin. Keep it fisting. <laughs> fist away. A fist away. Yeah. Like that? Close, yeah. Is that my fists are very small. Here, adjust it for her. Yeah, I got you. I have little tiny baby hands. I'm oh. sorry. I know. Trust me. That's why porn stars. <laughs> that's why porn stars, they have like these fucking huge dicks. Because like these girls have tiny hands. And then they're like, why are these guys so big? And then you're like. Nah, baby. It's just the hand. Do you know how small women's hands are? They're fucking tiny, bro. Literally, I like. I think the average for a guy is between four and a half inches to six and a half inches. That's for, what guys just say to make themselves for, feel better. For a fist, though, right? No, the hand is pretty freaking big. For and then guys. a woman's average is three and a half inches for yeah. her fist. That's fucking crazy. Size up. Yeah. So yeah. all these dudes are like, "Oh, my dick fucking is so small. Like, why does it look so small compared to these porn stars?" Like, dude, imagine this tiny fucking girl. <laughs> I wouldn't mind a TV or blowjob sometimes. I had a few times, but it wasn't like... It's de it depends, though. Like, if she doesn't know what the fuck she's doing, yeah. then it's like, all right, this is enough. But, like, if it's, like, t a girl that knows what they're doing, and then they're, like, adding a little bit of bite or a little bit of teeth to it, just to add a little bit more... Yeah. <laughs> no, a little more spice? Yeah, a little, yeah, yeah. Oh, stop! <laughs> a little more dominance? Is, yeah. that, is that what's going on? Exactly, yeah. Welcome to Waku Radio, where we like to live life fearlessly, and we bring you the sexiest people in Las Vegas. Yeah. I'm your co-host, Sebastian, and your host, Kobe, right there. What's up, guys? Welcome back to Waku Radio. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment below. Tell us your thoughts. And today's episode, we have a pretty interesting guest. She's going to tell you all the details about everything. We got topics talking about modeling in Vegas, OnlyFans. I don't want to say her job just yet, because I don't really know how to say it yet. But uh, we have Giraffe. <laughs> <laughs> On this podcast, we like to start off with two questions or three questions. Who are you? What you do? Okay. How do you make your money? What you do? What, how you make your money? And your your relationship status. Oh, damn. Okay. We just yeah. put someone on the spot like that. Yeah. All right. Well, I'm Giraffe. I'm local to Las Vegas. I model. And then the word that you can't say is herptologist. Mm. Um, well, more like aspiring herpetologist. I just work with reptiles on a day to day pretty much as my little part time job, okay. as well as doing OnlyFans and modeling full time. Funny enough, I left Harley Davidson as a finance manager after building up that as a career for about three years Damn. to uh, to say fuck it and just take care of snakes and model instead. Hell yeah, that's fucking um, awesome. And then lastly, Damn. as of like two weeks ago again, <laughs> like taken. Oh, engaged wow. to be engaged oh, wow. is the current joke that we have okay yeah so you were recently single is that how it worked you guys had like a little break or what yeah i kind of realized how toxic i was mm, nice and i was just like yo before we get like really deep and serious i kind of want to just like take a moment and step back and kind of like analyze myself and like really make sure i'm being a good partner to you because like Leo is like the sweetest thing in the world. Like the man's like a puppy dog. Okay. Like very much like golden retriever, black cat relationship. Mm. You can tell who's who. Right, right. Um, so I just felt like I was being really mean to him. Like it was one of those things of coming out of a really toxic relationship. And then like the only things in my head that I knew at the time was to be toxic rather than be in a healthy relationship. Mm. So it took a lot of like looking on the inside being like, yo, I see too much of my ex coming out of me and like all that grossness that he showed me at one point. Mm. And I don't want to emotionally destroy you in the same way. So we decided to kind of take a step back and just kind of reevaluate ourselves and try to grow and try to acknowledge it more so on my side than his. And like the entire thing was incredibly like healthy breakup. Like we just did a lot of conversations. It took about like, five really deep like heart-to-heart -heart conversations for us to finally be like okay like let's do this again like i think we're rock solid like in no way shape or form do i ever think that i will be a perfect partner right. and he doesn't ever expect me to be one and the mm -hmm. expectation of wanting to be a perfect partner to one another is a little bit not silly but a little bit just too tenacious i guess is yeah, the best yeah. word to say right um so we kind of took a step back for the last couple months and kind of like got everything figured out and really like 
learn to be alone and appreciate one another's company and just be friends to one another rather than a couple. Cause we just needed more friendship rather than yeah, to be yeah. together. Right. So I want to take the step back. Whoa. That's awesome that you can actually admit to that. Number yeah. One, that's fucking tough. <laughs> so I congratulate you for admitting that. That's fucking strong woman shit. But also what, what, what do you mean when you're talking about like, um, you know, you're being like too toxic. Cause I think a lot of women nowadays are toxic. Mm -hmm. they, they think they like, they have that independence or I don't need no man bullshit. I do whatever the fuck I want. And is that what you're talking about? Like you were kind of in that phase and then you're like, you know what? Let me step away. Maybe I do need a partner or want a partnership instead of being by myself in a relationship. Well, not necessarily. So it wasn't anything of the sort of like, I'm independent. I'm going to do what I want. Like Leo's always been an incredibly supportive partner when it came to my OnlyFans, when mm -hmm. it came to modeling, when it came to quitting Harley, mm -hmm. when it came to literally every single thing I've ever done, that man has stood by my side and been like, okay, let's do it. Mm -hmm. Like even as just a friend. Mm -hmm. So it was more so like when it came down to like the nitty gritty stuff, like when we'd get into fights, how I would react, mm. like how quick I was to blow up on him or how quick I was to start just talking shit or how quick I was to just get angry and not listen first okay, and not really take into consideration like his emotions or his feelings or the way that things might be stressing him out. And like there was even a couple of times like through and through like with my depression, like I would literally lay around all day long and I couldn't even do anything for myself. And he just kept supporting me through it. Oh, that's what's up. And granted, like, I appreciate that. And I love that. It was just one of those things of, I started relying on him and being too codependent for him to get me out of those moods, for mm. him to get me out of bed, for him to help me go to the grocery store. It started becoming me just being like, I need you to do everything. Uh, like, I don't, not that I didn't need him. It was just me becoming too codependent on him. Mm -hmm. And I felt like I was taking away from him being able to be himself and him being able to learn who he was and to grow as himself and to kind of get his own, like, because it turned into him doing everything for or with me rather than him being able to do anything for himself. Mm. So like whenever he'd go out and do things on his own, it'd be me texting and being like, where are you? Are you coming home soon? Like I'm really stressed or I'm really upset or I really need you to be here with me. So you want, so in a, in, in a way you needed to find your own independence in a way. Mm -hmm. oh. I felt like I was taking away from his life from his. Yeah. I feel like I was making him give too much of himself away mm -hmm. to help me. And it just didn't feel fair because I was like, you deserve to have your own likes, your own hobbies, your own like things you want to go out and do without me crying and complaining or you being worried sick all day because, Damn. you know, I haven't left bed. Like, that's not fair to you to sit here worried about me. Damn, that's crazy. Yeah. So it took a lot of self-reflecting. And that was one of the big conversations that was like a whole like heartbreak cry. And that's why he didn't turn around being like rude about it or mean about it because he understood like what I needed mm -hmm. and he understood like the separation the risk of us separating and we both agreed when we first broke up like look you're my person mm -hmm. like we're not doing this to go be with someone else or to go have fun or just like go say la vie whatever yeah like we're genuinely doing it to take a break and to like really self-analyze and reflect one another and be like I am a little too broken right now for my last relationship and I feel like I'm just like forcing you to pick up my broken pieces rather yeah. than reflecting on myself and learning how to be a better person for you yeah yeah i always th uh, we always talk about this how you know previous relationships like a lot of women will we we talk about we, well, we talk about it in a different light we say like body count matters right <laughs> i know this is this is funny but it's true because like the more you date and like do things with other people the more you're gonna drag that bullshit into the next relationship so mm -hmm. it's kind of like this is exactly what we're stating, right? Like Exactly. And it was a lot of things like my last relationship, like I had to give myself 110% away to him mm -hmm. for his success. Like I remember like working full time as a showgirl and like when I worked as a showgirl on the strip, like taking photos for tips, essentially I made bank mm -hmm. like, and because of how much I gave myself away, I have nothing to show for that. Mm. So like all of the money I made, all the stuff I worked for, everything I did was for nothing just to support that one man that was completely shit to me. Ah. So like, I remember there was a point in time I let him quit his job. I paid for his art supplies. I paid for him to be in a gallery. I paid for oh. his business stuff, everything. All he had to do was produce art and then show it off yeah, yeah, yeah. and just get people to sell it and buy it. Right. And he couldn't even do that. I'm, uh, you know, I want to step back. So I'm surprised that like you had to deal with these like emotional problems because when you're behind the camera, <laughs> right? I've seen you personally behind the camera. You're a fucking rock star. Like, like no, like, Con like self-consciousness at all it's like straight like confidence that like it's crazy like you'll see other girls that have been at shoots 
and they're like self-conscious and whatever but she, like giraffe here is a fucking rock star bro like it's kind of crazy that you're telling me that you had like these, these issues that no one ever really sees you know what i mean so well i i feel like ironically enough like my mental health I've always managed to kind of keep under wraps and not really mm -hmm. let people know like what I struggle with, like my anxiety or my depression or like getting overstimulated or anything mm -hmm. like that. So I kind of just disappear and go MIA on people constantly. Yeah. So usually whenever I have like those little bits of like anything, I just kind of hide myself rather than anything else. And I have considered like with my Instagram, like kind of divulging more into like mental health and talking about like things that matter to me. But I just, I don't know how to get personal yeah. on this like type of page. Yeah. And I don't know if I'm ready to get personal, like open up that side. Like I'm always happy to use those like a talking point. Cause I feel like people feel a lot more connected once they realize like, oh, okay. Like You're a she person. does struggle. Like yeah. when you see me in front of a camera and I'm being a rock star at an event, like you wouldn't believe for half a second I have anxiety yeah, and that I'm nervous and I'm practically shaking. Well, I, I think in, in, our, in our eyes, like we, like we say, we like to live life fearlessly. Right. And I think that's what you're doing. You're getting in front of a camera. You're not like, you have the anxiety, you have all these fucking fears that are like, Oh my God, do I look good? You know, like it, there's a bunch of different photographers. So <laughs> like you're literally stepping into that feeling of like, Holy shit. The anxiety is high, but I'm yeah. just going to fucking face it. And that's awesome. So how does it, how does it feel like when you, when you first got into modeling world, right? What did that, how did that start off? Well, okay. So it kind of goes back to my showgirl days. Okay. So I still remember the first feeling of this actually. It's like one of my favorite feelings in the world. So when I first got into modeling, I kind of just mark it as like when I first started showgirling and I don't know if you've seen this Las Vegas showgirls, the girls with like the giant yeah. feathers mm -hmm. that like have like the corsets and everything on. So I did that. So that was my first ever step into anything. And I still remember like my first shift crying because I couldn't put lashes on, like could <laughs> not put false lashes on, call my boss crying me like, I'm such an idiot. I can't do this. Like right. I'm not meant for this. How old were you when you first started there? 18. Damn. So like literally fresh out of high school, first job I got working that pretty much. Yeah. I, I feel like it's pretty common here in Las Vegas for a lot of the 18 year old girls to go that way, huh? Cause I think you can make a lot of fucking money. It's hit or miss. A lot of girls have come to me asking like how to get into it guidance. And I still give girls guidance on how to do it all, but it's kind of hit or miss. You have to know the right people cause you have to get into a specific company or work independently and people don't know if you have to get permits or anything of that That's stuff. True. So it's really not a lot of hoops to jump. Like you don't need a permit. It's probably you literally th that just, way or go to a uh, little D's. Yeah. Pretty, yeah. Little D's. Yeah. You're either going <laughs> to yeah. be a showgirl or a stripper. Yeah. yeah. And the, and the funny thing is like what you're saying, is there's probably a lot more process to be a showgirl on the strip because I do believe you need to get permits and stuff like that. No. Right? You don't. No. So you just hide up with a company and that's it? Yeah. You can even oh, okay, go independent. Okay. That's what I do it now whenever I go mm -hmm. out for random shifts to help out friends. Yeah. Okay. Because I know for little D's to be a stripper, you need to get a sheriff's card, mm -hmm. a business license, yeah. and all that stuff. So then it's a little bit more complicated. Yeah. But. Yeah. But you don't get arrested as a stripper. Can't get arrested as a showgirl. Uh, I just know uh, you talk a little too nicely. So I never got arrested. You can get arrested as a stripper. <laughs> if you try hard enough. I mean, it's not that hard for sure. You just have to say the wrong thing to the wrong person and uh, yeah. do the wrong thing yeah. at the wrong time. There's a there's a line that gets drawn in you know the the sex worker industry. You know what I mean? Yeah. But that's I think that's the greatest thing about well even actually even only only fans. I've been managing like four or five girls, and then I think two of our accounts actually got banned because of marijuana use. Oh my god! No way. Okay, noted. <laughs> Weed. Yeah. So um, they were smoking, you know, on there, and I guess. There was also something else like i think in one of the images that the girls posted she had like a kitchen knife or something like that are you serious and then someone reported her based off of that it could have been a hater i don't know but kitchen Man, i hope people don't pay to hate me yeah. actually that's a lie i hope all of my haters pay to hate me <laughs> if you want to hate me if you want my attention hit up my cash app yeah, and then we can have attention <laughs> yeah, yeah what did it feel like when you quit harley did you feel like you were like a little bit scared because i'm thinking that's a corporate world you're in the financial industry that's a lot of money, I'm guessing, right? And then you yeah. just, you leave and then you do, you know, this herpetologist and <laughs> be, did I say it right? Yeah, you did. Okay. And then you and then you get into the modeling full time and OnlyFans full time, I'm guessing. Yeah. So it's a lot of like, like a lot of risk. Yeah, a lot of risk for sure. So how did that make you feel? Oh, it felt fucking good. Yeah. Well, okay. So Harley was just it was just too much. Like I worked my ass off for about two years or so, mm -hmm. two and a half years, I'd say. Um, absolutely working my ass off to like be a fantastic finance manager. And I got lots of people on motorcycles that should not have been. Uh -huh. And then even when I got to Harley, I got a lot of people to buy back end products that probably did not need to. 
Um, and like, what I do you mean by that? Like accessories and stuff or yeah. aftermarket parts? Yeah. Like when it came, not an aftermarket parts, but like gap and like oh, okay. warranties, mm. like all that silly little stuff mm -hmm. because they mark them up ridiculously. Yeah. You like, can get that be, shit. Yeah. Like be fucking for real. You really think that like a warranty for a Harley Davidson should be more than $2,000? Fuck no. I it's think, a motorcycle. Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> but it's a it's Harley. Like, so if you can sell it that way. When someone's buying a $40,000 yeah. motorcycle, like... Two thousand dollars doesn't sound that bad all That's of a sudden. True. Yeah, and and the the fear of like laying down your baby, it's true. a big one too. Well, the irony is like even if you lay your bike down, your warranty's not going to cover it. Yeah, like there's nothing that's going to cover that. But that's I mean, if, if you were to wreck it though, if you were to wreck it, then Gap would technically cover that. Gap's though. like the only thing if you ever buy a motorcycle you should get. Yeah, like a warranty will be helpful depending on the type of bike that you get. Mm -hmm. But motorcycles are so low maintenance. The only one that really needs those like. A Harley, honestly, because there's so much more that like, goes into their engine and build as opposed to like sport bikes. Yeah. But like 90% of bikes just need gap. Just get gap. That's yeah. all you need. Yeah. Because it's more than likely using it stolen or if it gets into an accident, they're more than likely just going to say it's totaled because the amount that costs to fix a motorcycle compared to the value of it. Mm. Like just save yourself a headache, get gap. So can you tell us some more industry like secrets when it comes down to like financing a vehicle? Like technically it, financing a motorcycle is the same thing as financing a car, right? Yeah, it's just like, okay, what people don't understand when it comes to motorcycles is they're luxury items. Like yeah. the thing I'd always use to explain to my customers is like, you can sleep in your car, you can sleep in a house, mm -hmm. you can sleep in an RV and even a boat. You can't sleep in a motorcycle. Yeah. So like the interest rate is going to be higher. Mm -hmm. Deal with it. You can sleep by a motorcycle. That's on true. On the side of the road. <laughs> yeah, you can I sleep hope it doesn't rain. Just get a tent, you know? Just pick it up. How are you going to put a fucking tent on a motorcycle? That's oh, a Harley. I mean, to be fair, Harleys do have options like that, but I mean, nonetheless... Yeah. I'm trying to think, like, even a You bagger. just have a little tent, like, rolled up, and you just strap it to the oh, back seat, you know? Okay, gotcha. Yeah, and then you yeah, just pop it in. Yeah. You're not going to have, like, a like, luxurious tent where you can fit, like, five people in there. Yeah, it's going to yeah, be, yeah. like, that one TP, like, yeah. it's just you in the cold, like, it's in a sleeping a, bag. It's you in a fucking towel. <laughs> is what it is. It's you in a towel on a stick, like, one of those hobo ho yeah, fucking Yeah, yeah, you're like, fuck me. <laughs> but, like, the only tip is literally you're buying a toy. Oh. Like, it's going to be cheaper. Insurance is going to be cheaper. Always, always, always with your insurance, get uninsured, underinsured. Mm. Because people like to hit and run motorcycles constantly. So, like, mm. make sure your insurance covers you. Um, gap insurance is a must. Always on motorcycles. That That's really it. Because, yeah. like, there's no tricks of, like, purchasing a motorcycle. Because everyone thinks that, like, the interest rates are so high and that's where they get you. And it's like, well, the luxury vehicle, the APRs are going to be higher. Yeah. So nice. as long as you're, like, aware of that going into it. Because like, you don't understand how many people came in being like, I just bought a brand new truck with zero APR. And it's like, wow. You can live in that truck. You can't live in this toy. <laughs> yeah. Like a truck's sense. a necessity, a, a motorcycle's not. That's true. What a people a lot of people don't realize too is when you buy a luxury vehicle like that, uh, your credit score jumps mm -hmm. high. I remember when I first bought my motorcycle, that shit went from like six hundred to like six fifty in like two months or something like that. Mm -hmm. It was crazy. It literally will like pull you back and like slingshot you forward. That's yeah. how I always explain to people. Cause everyone's like, I bought this and my my credit score went down. It's like Buddy, that, that's how credit works. You yeah. use your credit and then it builds back, back up. It's really stupid, but that's how it works. Yeah, it's funny because it's true. Because we see it all the time too, like when we're running credit for people who want to buy houses and shit. I'll be like, you know, if you if you just keep the motorcycle, because a lot of people are like, oh, you know, I'll just get rid of it. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Keep that shit because your your credit, like whatever you have, you have a boat, that shit's going to skyrocket. You have a fucking motorcycle, that's going to skyrocket. You have a fucking jet ski, keep it. Like, it'll just keep going up. Pay off all your other shit, like your credit card and all mm -hmm. that. That shit needs to go. But your luxury vehicle, if you keep paying on it, your fucking shit. Yeah, because, like, the credit the credit companies, they don't look at it as, like, a necessity. Like you said, it's a, it's a leisure vehicle, basically. Mm -hmm. like yeah, if you can exactly. afford a leisure vehicle, they're expecting you to be able to afford a lot more. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So. Freaking, but then I remember <laughs> I learned the hard way. I paid it off, too. My other motorcycle, I paid it off. And my credit score dropped. And I was like, yo, what the fuck? But it's because it's a closed account. Uh, yeah, um, yeah, because the account's yeah. closed. And I was like, damn, I should just kept paying the payments. Which is it. like the dumbest thing in the world, because if you literally like, there's no way to leave any line of credit that's like a vehicle open technically, because at one point you're gonna finish paying it off. Yeah, exactly. So it's so stupid. Once you finish it, they're like, ah, ha, psych, you, that six. Yeah, like, they're like, oh, you closed out your account. Uh, that's a credit account that you just closed. It's not existing anymore. It's like well, closing a credit card almost. Yeah, it's the same thing. I was gonna yeah. say that too. When, when, like, whenever, whenever you make a full payment on your credit card, you don't get any credit for nope. it at all. <laughs> like I do that every month and I'm like, what the fuck is my credit at 600, 650 right now? It doesn't make sense. Like literally I, I have no fucking debts besides some mortgages and stuff like that, but that should only boost me up. Right. <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, uh, my dad's like, you're paying off your credit card every fucking month. And I'm like, 
Oh, I, I heard if you let the that's, statement come out, then you pay it. If you let the statement come out, mm -hmm. then you pay it off. Then it attacks to your. Well, the like, other the other way is you pay. I think it's like seven days before your actual due date. Yeah, because that's when the statement comes out. You pay half of it, and then when the uh when you then you pay one day before your your due date, and you're good. That's how you build credit. So I've been doing double payments. Oh really? Oh, I'll split it. See, like this half, is how I half. know everyone's like education for credit different because I was taught to pay the day of the due date. So like the day that it's supposed mm. to be, like the very first due date. If you pay it on that every single time, it'll be right. What's but your like, credit score, bro? I don't. I don't care anymore. <laughs> Seven eighty. No, I wish. Definitely, <laughs> my. It wasn't until I started working in finance, I finally started understanding credit more being like, so this is why it's important. It is. But then at the same time, you see so many different credit reports. Like I've seen so many 700 pluses mm -hmm. that literally I cannot finance anything to because they have no more income to use. Mm. Like people that have used and abused their credit. Like I remember I got into a fight with a guy one time because I couldn't get him approved. He had like a 700 plus, but he was already at his max like DTI, so debt to income. Mm -hmm. And essentially he's like, he would argue with me being like, I have a multi-million dollar house. Like, what do you mean you can't get me finance? And I was like, ooh, boom, there it is. You have a multi-million dollar house. You're at your max DTI, bro. I cannot get you finance. Yeah. And also if you have a multi-million dollar house, you can buy the $7,000 motorcycle cash. Yeah, yeah. Like stop bitching at me. So how did that work? Like when somebody like financed it through you versus like just paying out cash, do you lose profit when they buy cash? No, not really. Like if anything, we would make more off of cash because we didn't have to pay as into much like into fees because at the first shop I worked at was a mom and pop shop. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the banks that I worked with had a lot of like lender fees and mm -hmm. little things like that that we had to use to work with them. And a lot right, of fees yeah. we'd have to pay back to them essentially. Right. But if I bought cash, then all they had to do was pay my fees. Wow. So like they might get a discount of like, like 500 to a thousand dollars maybe is yeah. at the time. However, that's about how much we had to pay in lender fees anyways. Yeah, so yeah. it kind of balanced out. There wasn't really, they felt like they got a better deal that way. Mm -hmm, <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, more logical. It, you're better off buying a motorcycle cash, honestly, yeah. than like financing it mm -hmm. because the likeliness of it being stolen or being totaled before you're done with your finance time. Yeah. Then like you're kind of SOL. I never, I've never bought a brand new motorcycle ever. I've always bought like secondhand used just because I'm like, fuck that. I, I mean, know. honestly, you're better off that way. Yeah, I'm like, dude, I'm guaranteed I'm going to fucking drop this bitch in the next, like, couple of months if I ride it daily, right? Pretty much. Especially first-time riders. Oh, dude. First-time riders, man. You're going to drop the bike. Do you course. remember how fucked up my first bike was? That shit was, yeah. like, it was, the chassis was bent, bro. Like, I couldn't even lean to one side because that shit was so, like, curved. It was, like, the R6 or something like <laughs> yeah, that? Yeah, yeah. R6. See, I had a Ninja 650 as my first bike, and I remember when I was learning how to ride it, I dropped it on one side. And when I dumped it, I made like, what did I call it? I think it was like a God made shorty or something because I broke the little, the clutch. Okay. So it made my, my clutch a shorty okay. essentially. So I was like, Ooh, perfect. My hands fit perfectly on it a now. God made shorty. Dude, my first motorcycle <laughs> would even start. I had to push start it all the time. Oh God. <laughs> I had a shitty R6 with carbureted still and everything. Yeah. Oh, and I was like, fuck. Yikes. That black one. Right? Yeah. The black one. I was just running up and an uphill would suck, man. I was trying to run uphill. I mean, this bike's like what, five, 600 pounds. Like fuck, buddy, try to hop on it. Try yeah, to hit the clutch yeah. and all that. Yeah. <laughs> We were poor. We were poor kids. To and be we fair, just... I dropped my bike on the other side too. That one didn't even like break. It was like my little curly cue, I called it, because oh, it, it was bent. Yeah. So I was just like, well, tiny hands. Nice. It works perfect. Nice. Tiny hands. Tiny <laughs> hands. That's our inside joke for today. Tiny, yeah. tiny hands. Yeah. Oh, well, yeah, true, because we we're talking about penises earlier and tiny yeah. hands. Yeah. Yeah, the confidence yeah. boosters. Yeah. Do that again? <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean? <laughs> can you give us uh um can you give us some tips on how women should uh give their man blowjobs? Hold on, that's from all my good secrets. <laughs> like, secrets. Just one secret, just one secret. Use both hands. Oh. Ah. How do you do that though? What if it's not long enough? Well, that's why you kind of use the other one to kind of like cut beneath. So you okay. kind of have it like this. Oh. And then you can kind of get a like massage the balls a little bit as you like you know, it's like a little like a twisty motion. Wow. And then uh. that kind of helps as as you do that, you can kind of like slowly get yourself to go deeper and deeper. Oh. Deep throating works, ladies. Gag a little bit, the little the little muscles in your throat, that little tensity usually helps make it feel even better. Oh wow. So if you can usually like gag a couple times as you're deep throating and doing that. You hear that, ladies? Literally it's good to gag. That's crazy because like Yep. <laughs> I, I feel like a lot of times women forget the balls. Like, I don't, that's like, I'm not going to lie. That's my favorite part. Really? They forget the balls yeah. and the taint. 
Yeah, the taint. Yeah, you want a man to go crazy? Go lick the taint. <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. But not enough men also know that. So, like, the ones that I've ever done that with either, like, freaked out and got a little, like, yeah. not freaked out, but got, like, uncomfortable, per se. Oh, not, the feel... bu- not the butthole. Like, no, right, right under no, the ball. Oh, it's yeah, like right. when they feel my hand there, they're, they're like, oh, oh, no. And I'm like, babe, trust me. <laughs> they know what I'm doing. <laughs> oh, I got Leo the names right for man. a reason. <laughs> I'm just kidding. That's not, I'm true. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Well, I've always made the n- joke that like my nickname giraffe is from being a throat goat. Oh, and I'm just like, just uh, kidding. You know, I was that's actually going to ask why, but now I'm, I get it. I'm, no, it's not it at all. <laughs> just, it just makes more sense because I do OnlyFans now. Mm. So like I can make that joke, but that's really not what oh, I got yeah. that name. Oh. It was like a nickname given to me in like high school. <laughs> oh shit. Why, why did they call you that anyways? Like the real reason. Okay. So the true story, I had a friend back in high school that was like super into Twitter because like I started high school in like what, 2011, 2012 ish, I guess. Right. Because I graduated in 2016. Um, and that's like right as like Twitter got big, right? So my friend was like, yo, you gotta get on Twitter, you gotta get on Twitter. And I just was not into social media as all growing up. So I was just like, no, I don't, I don't even know what my at would be. Mm-hmm. Just like as an excuse to not have to make it. Cause you know, any cop out's a good cop out. Yeah, right. So then she was like, okay, fine, I'll help you. So she like came into my house and I was like, all right, fine, what are we doing? And she was like, giraffes go meow. And I looked at her and was like, why the fuck would my name be Giraffes Go Meow? And she looked at me. She was like, well, because your favorite animal is Giraffe. Mm. And I was like, okay. And she's like, and you have a lot of cats. Mm. And I was like. That makes sense. That, I, that Okay. I can't argue that, that logic. Like, that, that's fair. Yeah, that adds up. That makes a lot of sense. And it just stuck through. Yeah, and it years. just stuck through to, like, as I had my Twitter, my Instagram, Snapchat. And then later on, as I became, like, a gamer and everything, mm-hmm. the nickname Giraffe just stuck. And then once I made my modeling page, I was already known as Giraffe. So yeah. I was just like, well, just carry on the legacy. Like, it's an iconic name. Nobody else finds it. Like, yeah. if you look up Giraffes Go Meow, like, you're only going to find me. Yeah, that's true. So it's just kind of... I, I still like the throat goat story better. I think the throat goat story is, like, really funny. <laughs> I think it's better. People it's, believe it way too much. And I'm just like, wow. I, I 100% believe it more. Yeah. I, I, Anyways, I, do you post content like that on your OnlyFans? Are you posting that stuff? Or is it more like no. modeling stuff? Actually, no. <laughs> That's really? what makes it funnier. Like, I don't have any boy or girl content on there. Mainly because, like, one, I don't like male creators. They just spook me too much. Every time a male creator hits me up, it's like a dick pic in my DMs. <laughs> And I hate that shit. Dude, that's crazy. Like, ask to take me on a date. Go subscribe to my OnlyFans. Like, support me. Yeah. Like, show some like love to me first. Like, I don't want to see your slong, bro. That's and crazy. just because you have a big dick does not mean you know how to use it. Just because mm-hmm. you know how to thrust doesn't mean you know how to stroke. Like, come on, G. Damn. Like, I don't want to see the big dick. I want to know what your what your stroke game is. Dude. <laughs> All about the motion in the ocean. Honestly. Like, you don't understand how many times I hooked up with a guy that was like big and i was like ooh, like this is gonna be fun and it was literally them just like pounding it the entire time and i'm like i'm in pain like this is not fun i'm uncomfortable like i like this isn't fun like, i'm right. done no yeah so size does not matter to you no well okay a little bit just a snitch so okay like, it, so it what's has... too small if i can't fit it in one hand you're like done. it's not enough to fit in one hand yeah i gotta be able to do a, a two hand if i can at least like do two hands or make it look like I'm doing two hands. Okay. But so if I have really... a solid two inch and big balls, you can two hand that uh, one. Nope. <laughs> do it. If it takes fingertips, you're embarrassing me. Oh, wow. Like I can't. I actually, I remember when I first saw a chode for the first time, he was like trying so hard to get, trying to get me to give him head. And I was like, now nah, I got to go home. <laughs> like I, I got to walk home tonight. I'm going to be late. Oh my I got to leave. And he was like, oh no, just quick, just quick. And I was like, no wow. like i did i was just like no and i just ghosted him after that because i was like hold on what is it literally looked like a mushroom Wait, it was it was what's scary. a chode to you yeah because yeah because yeah, we have a different we have a different definition for it chode. literally it was like the girth of my pinky and like had a little mushroom top oh wow like it was that's, it a, was micro that's a micro penis yeah yeah, yeah. A, ch- a chode is what every girl wants nowadays uh, nope i'm it's sorry a, it's a thick Mm-mm. cock it's a short i like thick them thick, cock. it's a I short thick nope. cock you don't like the short they cock so like if you you if, gotta have a good amount of girth like what and if you it's gotta like, have like at least a, a, a decent amount of length what Just if it's like least. half that energy drink but that su- thickness show the camera no. <laughs> just no. wrap one hand around it it's too big yeah. or too small well that's and it's like half it's like half of the can yeah you could put see that's your palm yeah that's you, can, a, you, you can, can palm, palm it and then you can have half the hand yeah i don't know if you my waist like my hips 
not childbearing. <laughs> a little too thick. Like no. <laughs> so not that thick. Not that thick. Maybe like what is this like? Maybe a little bit like more like Red Bull. Red Bull cans. Okay, yeah, Red yeah, Bull yeah. cans are a little bit skinnier. Are they? No, Red Bull cans about that thickness. <laughs> okay, well maybe I just have a preference for Red Bull cans. Maybe I have something against Alani. Uh, she wants. She wants that bull. <laughs> yeah, she does. Holy shit. Like length wise, perfect. Thickness it could be a little skinnier. Okay, so you like like the the long and skinny penises. Well, I want to say I like a little bit of girth. Like it, it just. Because your your definition about the size of like one of my dildos, I guess. I guess I could make that work. Okay, there you go. Fair enough. I'm I'm here not for me personally, but for the people <laughs> who are watching. What content are you posting on OnlyFans? <laughs> because you're saying there's no boy or girl, so there's got to be like solo videos, right? Oh yeah, tons of solo videos. Um, I have a lot of girl girl content. I love making girl girl content. I have a joke on my Twitter that's like, any ladies that want to collab, just show me your titties. Nice. Like slide in my DMs with titties. I'm in, but men keep your dicks out of my dick box mm. unless you're paying me to see it. So you're a Please. tit girl? Oh yeah, I love titties. Not I love ass. it all. Oh, I love ass too. <laughs> I just love women. Women are hot. I'm sorry. <laughs> why? Why is that? Is that it's so much more acceptable for women to be? Because my buddy asked me this question. He was like, "Why is it okay for women to be like okay with like hooking up with other women, but guys and guys aren't right?" And I was like, "Number one, because it's like gross. No one wants to fucking see that." But then he was like, but isn't it still considered gay because it's two girls? I mean, I love men that are okay with like their sexuality that have been mm -hmm. with, like, I could care less about any of that. Cause like, I've met plenty of like bi guys or gay guys. And I'm just like, Ooh, really? Like give me all the juicy deets. Like I want to hear all about it. Wow. So I've never once been like, Ooh, guy and guy gross. Like I've always thought it was kind of like, okay. Cool. Really? You're down with that? Yeah. Like oh. I think men that are okay with their sexuality are so much more attractive. Like anyone that's like, Ooh, no, that's gay. I'm just like. Mm, you're not comfortable with yourself. That's icky. I don't but think like, you have to be uncomfortable with yourself to find that not attractive to yourself. But I feel you know like what it's, I'm saying? It's, it's based on the reaction. Because there's oh, some yeah, guys yeah. that have like a negative reaction that are like either, okay, I'm not into that. And that's perfectly fine. You don't mm -hmm. have to be into everything. But the ones that are like, no, it's disgusting. You're like, mm -hmm. no, it's gay. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah, no shit, Captain Obvious. <laughs> but you don't have to look at it or like say it. Like we all know what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like you making a whole fit about it mm -hmm. is just like more gross on your own behavior. Oh, yeah, like over exaggerating yeah, and like, stuff. Like, oh my god, what the fuck? Like, if you look at two girls and be like, "Ooh, they're kissing," that's gay. No, no. Well, here's no my shit, Captain Obvious. Like yeah. we know. So my here's my whole opinion on it. I think when people overreact like that, they're hiding something. Exactly. Right. Like, it's like, okay, dude, I get it, but you're, like, overreacting to the point where you're trying to sell me a fucking story versus, like, we all know this is fucking gay. No one was, no one really <laughs> likes it, right? But it's like, when you're, like, like what you're saying, you're like, oh, my fucking oh god. Oh, my god, what the fuck? Yeah, it's like, what the fuck are you oh, trying to sell? Start what flipping you, tables and shit. Yeah, like, what are you trying to sell me, bro? Like, lies? It's just like, like, just be like you're the best gay, man. I have, like, plenty of guy friends that were like, yeah, like, I've gone head by, like, another guy to see, like, what it's like. And right. I was just like okay and they've also been like i've also tried it before and i'm like wow cool. what do you think any tips like what, what was your experience with it and moving what, on sebastian what was your experience with it bro i don't know man i don't know <laughs> <laughs> I, I i just would hope that they could give better head than a chick because they have oh. one i mean you would think so <laughs> you would hope right I mean, you'd be surprised I, how like, many... I would, like i would think like i have a penis so i would know how my penis would react to certain movements and strokes yeah it's like what they say so, about girls like yeah yeah, yeah. like I a mean, girl like, should be able to please a woman a lot better than a man should please a woman yeah. without a penis at so, least you but know. weirdly enough no really i mean like what, girls have a hard time finding a clit not really i mean we get that part of it all but like <laughs> i feel like when it comes to like the opposite sex since it's already so much like drive between like pleasing the other i don't know i feel like it just depends because i've gone head from both men and women mm -hmm. and like i've had some phenomenal head for men and some like like good head from women like they know how to find like the clit so like of obviously course. if you can find the clit while giving head where like, is it it doesn't exist it doesn't exist. Well, like, just look in the little time and using the top area, oh, you can find top? it. I thought it was in the bottom. Oh, damn. <laughs> I was way off. That's the bottom. Oh, I was looking at their butthole the whole time. Fuck. I, I mean, was like, oh, your clit's in the ass. I mean, to be fair, getting your ass ate also feels just as great. So Why is that? One time we were hanging out with a, with a the group of friends. We we're all hanging out <laughs> around cars and shit, right? Growing up in high school. And then this old man used to come by every day. And he's like, and we ask him, hey. Let's call him Joe, right? I'm like, hey, Joe, how's it that you've been married to your wife for fucking 40 years? And he's like, I'm not going to lie. 
if you like her and you love her, lick her butthole. She'll never go. And I was like, what? What does that mean? And then you know what I did? I tried it. The bitch stuck around for a long time, bro. Dude, I've noticed that every time I lick a girl's butthole, she <laughs> yeah. sticks around a little bit longer than other ones. <laughs> why is that, giraffe? Why do they stick around longer or why do they like it? Both. No, why do they stick around longer? Okay, well, you like it just because there's a lot more, um, nerve what is endings. it, uh, nerve endings in your ass. Mm -hmm. So, like, just like it's a G-spot for males, instead of having to go, like, in it, <laughs> you mm -hmm. have to go inside, yeah. um, you can feel the nerve endings and the back end, so it feels just as good. And I don't know, I feel... Is it because it's like rare I mean, for a guy to do that, and that's why? Not necessarily. It's like because I've met a lot of guys that eat ass. Oh shit! Sure. But I feel like it's just like a new. I don't know. I don't want to make it sound so simpy, but I mean, I just feel like it's a sense of love or like a sense of like appreciation for the other one's body. Because mm. like it's one thing for you to like kiss me and like eat eat me out and like do all these other things to me, right? But like I feel like it's a new level of like love and dedication once you like go for the ass because like that's kind of one of those spots that's kind of like taboo mm -hmm. or a little more like less likely to be ventured into especially like a newer relationship yeah. so i feel like it's one of those things of like you kind of get to a point being with someone so many times that it's like ooh, i don't want just like the the, the normal shit. spots like i want like the most intimate spot at this mm -hmm. point now mm -hmm. so i feel like it's just the intimacy of that spot yeah. that gets people to stay around more yeah like licking armpits it is pretty it is pretty entry level Hold like on, did you hear what i just said oh licking armpits yeah, yeah i tried it have you yeah, yeah. did you because yeah. someone told me about it and they're like you should lick their armpits i'm like all right let me try and, and i did? tried it in a girl and she was like freaking out. another one i heard was you lick right behind yeah, the, yeah, the, that's called you know what that's called right i don't know what it's called that's called the fourth hole what behind her lit knee? Yeah, yeah. yeah I actually behind tried. Oh my god! Yeah, I heard that one and I tried that one. I was like, damn, this actually works. The it's girl's actually crazy. It's because it's uh, it's a really sensitive erogenous zone. Mm -hmm. And there's a, used to be a joke that goes around, and I'm it was taking saying, the notes right now. And and they they used to literally call it the fourth hole. I like in, like yeah. we used to call it that as, as a joke all the time. So like when you're fucking smashing, right? What you'll do is you'll like grab her by the behind the knee and you'll rub it. Yeah. And then later you'll just like lick it and then she'll fucking come off. Huh. Wow, dude, I'm fucking oh, educated. I didn't, whoa, okay. Well, I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't know the whole God reason damn. behind it, but like I heard about it and I tried it once and the girl went crazy. Yeah. But that's crazy. I'm going to try rubbing it. There's also time. the feet and toes too. So mm -hmm. See, I, Yeah, I love my feet and toes being touched and like sucked on. I think it's so hot. But does it make you orgasm more or faster? It gets you to climax a little bit faster? Or? Okay, truthfully, I don't think I've honestly... Ever? You never climaxed? I have, but it wasn't from them fucking me. It was from me riding them because I know how to ride dick uh, better so I can make myself come. Okay, that makes sense. So like whenever I get annoyed, I just put them on their back and just ride them because yeah, I'm yeah. just like, let me take care of myself. I can do this and take care of you. Yeah, yeah. Um, But I don't think everyone's ever got me to climax on my back before. Well, that, well, no, that's a lie. Leo has a couple times, but not doing anything like that. Mm. It's really weird because my son's name is Leo, so... <laughs> 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 just, but I'm like, hey, look, if he's happy, that's cool, man. Because eventually I'm gonna have to deal with this shit. Right? I'm like, okay, kid. In a few more years. How old is he? He's nine. Oh, Jesus. He's, yeah. get, he's getting to that age. He's gonna be fucking pretty soon, probably. Kids are fucking earlier, dude. Oh God. <laughs> Don't bring the Wrap kids it up, into kids. this. <laughs> Wrap it up. Oh, it's it's a, it's it is what it is. You know what I mean? Like yeah, we just have true. to accept it at this point. Have you seen all the stories in the news lately? Of all these teachers yeah. fucking young teenage boys. It's mortifying. It's fucking, but it's crazy the amount though. There's been like, like well, just this week alone has been like I don't eight. honestly think it's been more like teachers doing it. I think just more of teachers getting caught now mm -hmm. because we live in the age of like social, media. like social media and everything. Like think about it, like serial killers, like crimes, all that stuff. Like, like no serial killer can get away with what Jeffrey Dahmer did or Ed Gein or any of those other like infamous killers because of like social media nowadays, yeah. right? Yeah, could so, you like, imagine if there was a Ted Bundy now? Exactly, like it, it would be impossible yeah. with how social media with is. All like the cameras, everything, text, and yeah, everywhere. Yeah. Cameras, like doorbells, like parking lots, like literally everywhere is so like has so many cameras. And then on top of like iPhones being like track my friends, like all of that stuff. <laughs> Ted Bundy was the one that went to uh went to uh that like like intimidate girls into like getting in his car and stuff like that and go over to her he place whatever. Yeah, he would seduce them. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Can you imagine nowadays some chick tweeting, "Oh my god, this creep just came into my car and he I'm letting him in though, but fuck, I'm coming over." Well, right you know, now. You, he, exactly. Or well, like and then next thing you know, like on Twitter or yeah, like yeah. texting your girls being like, "OMG, just picked up this cute guy." Like makes you keep an eye on my location. Like I've sent locations to girlfriends before whenever I was going off on like a little like like random hookup and stuff because yeah. I wanted them to know like where I was at, especially if someone I wasn't 
I didn't know like, like 110 percent, you know. Mm -hmm. So like I've sent out my location to girlfriends whenever I go out on like nights or any even like nights drinking together being like, hey, like, let's all make sure we have each other's location. So if anyone gets separated, we're good. Yeah, I think some girls now are like they're so. I don't know. They're so used to being on like the Instagram that they'll just be like, oh, I'm going out with this. And then you're like, if this yeah. dude fucking murders her, then. Actually, I know it's a lot of girls are actually are like sharing their locations with their friends because it's funny because yeah. like, you know, I bring whatever yeah. and they'll be like, where are you going? Because you're not know, live on the outskirts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, you'll take them out there. Yeah. And they'll be like, where are you going? And yeah. she's like, oh, sorry, my friend's calling. I'm like, it's cool. Just answer. I don't give a fuck. I'm like, you're not going you're gonna to go back. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah that's true. <laughs> but like same thing when it comes to like sex offenders and stuff too like teachers like now it's like little guys like texting each other in their group chats being like oh i'm just bang like miss smith or yeah, like, yeah, yeah. like going on instagram being like on their little like secret pages being like ha 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 just did this like yeah, to smash kids, my teacher bro. yeah like kids yeah. post everything nowadays like look at tiktok for crying out loud well the like, thing there's is there's so many things I mean, on there that kids should not be posting it's like bro like that's incriminating yeah. like this is how you dumb kids are getting put in jail no and, it's like, not even that kids I, from my generation like we got away with that shit yeah. they only got caught months later by our parents well the thing is oh you know when social media started popping off a lot of kids were getting their parents in trouble mm -hmm. or like tax evasion and all types of shit because they would just be recording shit and then they'd be like oh well mr smith for example he says he doesn't he only makes this much money and we've been he's been under investigation now his son is like recording all these things in his house and we can see that he owns all this expensive shit well irs comes to your ass you know what i mean or even like people getting served like court orders mm -hmm. now because they found them through social media yep like there's even been cases of like unsolved murders that are now getting solved because of dna testing like yep. a family member went in to be like i want to know what my genetics are yep. and then suddenly like uncle billy's arrested for like rape from like 10 years ago because like the dna finally matches up oh. like because they took someone of them like a family or relative was able to link it to somebody wow i didn't know that so like there's so many crazy cases with like modern day technology of like you can't get away with shit anymore i didn't even think I, about i'm pretty that. sure there's like stories out there where, like you know you're getting a dna test with your significant other and you find out you guys are related yeah, yeah, yeah. that's another no. like weird thing <laughs> I, well, I watched this video recently and they were, um, it was a couple and they didn't realize that they were brothers and sisters and they've been married for like 10 years and had kids oh and everything. But the way it worked oh, was no. the, the whole oh, thing shit. was because I guess one of the siblings was taken away for adoption, like really, really early on. And then the other one was like, grew up with a totally different family. And then they fucking found each other, fell in love and then had kids and then figured out that they were related. Oh, what insane. do you do at that point? I mean, at that I point. get divorced. I'm sorry. You think I don't so? Care. Yeah, absolutely. Get a get a late term abortion. I don't know. But what would you do? Like, late term abortion? <laughs> they're they're you're just like gonna murder. You're gonna murder them. <laughs> you're gonna murder them at nine times. Sorry. Old Yeller. Kids, we found out some dark shit. We can't go on. Hey, uh, we're about to go on a fishing trip, son. <laughs> <laughs> Your mom's coming with, dude. <laughs> you, my sister, I mean your mom. <laughs> She's coming with us. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> We're going on family vacation. The kid's like, hey, yeah, look, I caught a... <laughs> That's some but really, dark like, What do you do? Like, you obviously can't stay married. You obviously... Well, I think they did, so. Because they were like, dude, at this point, like, what? you just have to accept it. But, like, could you look at your partner and be like, hey, wife slash brother, Let's go to bed and have sex again. But after they've already, knowing. yeah. But the thing is, they've already done it. So for ten years, I mean, it's like going down to the south, right? Like it's acceptable. Like they they say, oh, no, it's not acceptable. It's well, acceptable socially to them. Them, but like for us, <laughs> yeah, for sure. But I'm just saying, like down there, the, eventually they're just like, you know what? It's fine. Fuck, I don't know what the saying for. I don't know what's the saying, but I know a joke. Go ahead. Oh, God. You, you want to know why reverse cowgirls illegal in Alabama? Why? You can't turn your back on family. <laughs> oh, that's bad. <laughs> that is terrible. You liked it. <laughs> it's terrible. Do you like reverse cowgirl? Yeah. No. Mm. I like it when a girl goes reverse cowgirl. It hits that a different works. spot. Like, I don't I mean, know why. It just does. I but like it. It's out easy. Because my, my back's tattooed. So, like, I have, like, two lower, like, moth tattoos. Mm -hmm. They're actually, like, supposed to be, like, hand holders. So they're like perfectly on the back of my oh, waist. Damn. You can put your thumbs like right on so you know where to like grab on. So like for the sake of how tattooed my body is, yes, because I look hot as fuck. Mm -hmm. But the front of my body is also really hot because I have my sternum done and like mm -hmm. all my thigh tattoos. Oh, I've seen it all. Yeah, I know. They're beautiful. <laughs> so like 
they are. I also love to be dominant and like hold down. And I feel like I can't get that pleasure of like fucking with people mm. if I have my back turned. Ah. Uh. You like, can. yeah, I, you know what? Just tie a leash around their neck. Yeah. I mean, I do have a few leashes. I can pull do. that shit. You know, I've always thought, like, when when we first met, I always thought that you were more of the dominant in your relationship. Like, I didn't, I don't know your man at all, personally, right? But I, I from just looking at you and telling how you are, I can feel that you're. More yeah, of a, a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit. Just, just a smidge. I mean, I've. So Leo's like a very, very innocent man. Like he yeah. hasn't been like a very lot, like a lot of relationships. I'm one of his first like very big, serious relationships, mm -hmm. which is like another reason why the whole breakup was a big thing for us to go mm -hmm. through. So like I've taught that man a lot of things. Yeah, yeah I bet <laughs> so you like, have. He's learned to be a lot more dominant, but he's such a sweetie. Like there was one time I told him like, yes, like when you have me, like when you're hitting him in the back, you know, like doggy style and stuff, like shove my face down nice. and be aggressive. I remember one time he did it and he was doing like a really good job. Like I was about to come. I was like, yo, you're, you're being amazing right now. And I remember him stopping and like pulling me back up being like, are you okay? I'm not being too rough, am I? Mm. And I literally giggled so hard. I was like, you were doing so good. Yeah. Why did you stop? Sometimes so, people just don't have it in them, man. He's just so, such a sweet little like angel to me that like, yeah. He literally just can't be aggressive very often, but he tries. Like, I've gotten to call me like his little whore, like little oh, things shit. like that. Like, he's gotten better at it. Nice. But like, he just like lets me dominate him so much more. Mm -hmm. And it's just so much fun to do that to him. Cause like, he's just such a good little sub for me sometimes. Damn. Like, it's so fun. What is with the dominant women on our podcast lately, dude? I mean, we attract what we are, you know? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Oh my god, dude. True, we've been having a lot of dominant women. Yeah. Well, yeah. like, dominance is just so much sexier to have. Like, a man to give me their power in that moment is just like, yes, absolutely. Like, I'm going to destroy you and your mind in this moment. Like, they're, like, you can try to take it away from me, and absolutely, I'm a switch, so, like, i love for you to take my power back. Like, go for it. Of like, course. I will happily, like, be the biggest brat in the world and make you fight for that power. Mm. But, there's just something about, like, talking shit to someone while like making them beg for you mm -hmm. like i personally love that shit like i love to make people beg for me and tell me how badly they want me and like literally make them to the point where they're like please like please just let mm -hmm. me like finish now and i'm like all right fine but, i guess but let's be honest you like the dominating factor yeah you like, like if, being dominated though i like both like i love but what, both. If, if it came down to what would you require more like absolutely like necessary if you had to choose one I'm such a happy little switch. Truthfully, I love being a brat. I'd rather be submissive. But like, I love being a brat because of how much I love being punished. Like, yeah. pain is my pleasure. Exactly. Like, the only thing I don't like is tying me down. Because at that point, like, then you're like, you're copping out. Like, there is no dominance in this. You're using oh, okay. a tool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, if, you, so need, you're, if you're, you need a tool to hold me down, yeah. then like, you don't deserve to dom me whatsoever. So you're into CNC type stuff too? What's CNC? Like, consensual, non-consensual? No. You're not into CNC, but no. that's technically what you're I saying. I love consensual, but like, if it turns into a brief moment of me being like, eh, I'm not comfortable with this and you don't stop, like, I I will just completely stop and you won't get anything from me. No, anymore. yeah, that's what, but, but like, but if you're consenting to that feeling though, you're giving permission well, for it's it. Well, it's not, I don't like the non-consensual, like that. It's consensual, non-consensual, not, not, not. No, no, I get you, I get you. <laughs> but like. <laughs> yeah, nobody wants the non-consensual. Yeah, that's, yeah, yeah. Trust me. yeah, that's great. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> That, that's not what we're aiming for here, no, guys. Okay. We're talking about if she has the kink of like getting put down, yeah. right? But like you're fighting for it, like being a brat, technically. It's not consensual, non consensual, because you're consenting to the fact of like, I want to be dominated, but I'm not going to let you. So you're going to have to fight for it. That's technically consensual. I mean, yeah, okay, yeah, kind of. Right. But like, I guess it depends, like partner to partner, because like, there, there's definitely a trust factor when it comes yeah. to that shit. Yeah. Like when it comes to like me wanting to be bratty, like it's more so me just wanting to be like punished more. Cause like I love being spanked. I love being held down. I love my hair being pulled. I love being told to be a good girl. Like I love all of that stuff. That's awesome. But if someone did that without knowing that about me and like didn't understand, like I'm just a brat and was just being like more dominant to try to like mm -hmm. put me in my place without knowing like this is my boundaries and what I enjoy per right. se. Then like it's a fine line. Yeah, I can. I can so like, that. I enjoy it, but I feel like it have to be like under discussion. Mm. Like I feel like it's a really, really fine line. Mm. I feel like some people take the consensual, non-consensual stuff, and like almost like the rape fantasy type stuff, mm -hmm. and I don't like that. Yeah. Like if I'm being like 
a pain in the ass. Like I'm not doing it because I want you to tie me up. If you do that, like I will absolutely punch you in the face. Yeah. You, what you want is you want to be punished and like, yeah. like daddy girl brat type shit. Yeah. yeah, yeah like yeah. I very much enjoy like if I'm going to be dominated, I want you to use like your manliness to hold me down. Mm -hmm. Like you to like grip my wrist and like really like use yeah, yourself course. rather than anything else. Yeah. 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 Makes sense. So but no, I also, like, so enjoy no being equipment. like gentle with me too, if that yeah, makes sense. Like, of course. like hold me down and tell me I'm being a good girl, but also like, you know, like you can be aggressive with me. Just like that's aftercare. I feel like some people think that like, if I'm being that way, you're supposed to like force it on more so. And it's like, no, 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 no. There's like, aftercare. There's aftercare. You know what aftercare yeah. is, right? Yeah, of course. So like you play, you play the punisher, you play the punishy. And then afterwards you got to fucking cuddle and kiss and yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I get it. I I'm, feel like it's just like a really, a fine line when people like talk about consensual, non-consensual, because it comes in more of the idea of like yeah, the every, fantasy. And I don't fuck with that at all. That's because everybody likes to jump to the extreme, right? Like, yeah, that's the extreme <laughs> end of everything. Like we like the our some of our last guests are into that shit, you know, like the Dom and stuff yeah, like yeah. that. She's into <clears> that. But you're into like the lighter version of CNC. Right? Yeah, so that makes sense. But, dude, I wanted to ask, would you let a girl like dominate you just once? Like, let her tie you up. With, I would have uh, to trust her a lot. Like, I have to trust her a lot. What about if, would you let me dominate you? Oh, yeah, daddy. Anytime yeah. you want. <laughs> Do it. Yeah. Tie me up. <laughs> I got a lot of toys, bro. Yeah, spank me. Hell yeah. Oh, yeah, I got floggers, <laughs> whips, chains, all types of shit. Oh, my favorite. <laughs> nice. Yeah, but with for a chick, it, like, it, I, I let, uh, I probably let only two girls done it to me so far in my entire life. Really? Yeah. Dominate you? Yeah, the first one I tried, I was like, oh, hell no, I'm not doing this yeah, shit. Yeah. The other one I was actually into, and I was like, all right, well, you can do it. Really? What did she do to you? She pretty much been a little bit more dominant. I mean, like, like strapped you, know. you down, tied you down, or what? Yeah, trapped me down and like slapped me around a little bit, choked me out. I'm like, all right, that's cool. Hmm. Yeah. What's up? You, do you? But remember? I didn't let it go long because after a while, I was like, all right, you can stop now. Yeah, but do you? Do you remember <laughs> the fun part about being a I'm switch? Like, get over here! It turns into like, ooh, okay, like you can dominate me until you see the one like little moment of weakness of, ooh, you're not being very dominant now. Like yeah. I can literally steal all of your power in this moment, and it's so fun. That it's just like. It's just like it's hard to hold back and like yeah. let someone fully dominate you for any time. Because mm -hmm. there's like a point where it like for for me like it got like uh I don't want to say I got mad because I don't want to say like I was, technically it is mad like I wasn't like pissed off or I wanted like murdered a bitch yeah. but I got like a little like like ugh. that's what BDSM is though. yeah it's like changing that like like what she says yeah the, the instead, of of it's, power. instead of becoming defensive I was like all right I'm coming to become an aggressor yeah and then yeah yeah but yeah I, but I have to trust a chick like a lot and be like really into her yeah I've never yeah. yeah I think I'm too much of a dom to like try to switch up it never has happened to me ever and even it, when it has like I remember the first time a girl ever slapped me across the face I got so fucking mad <laughs> that, that like I ended up punishing her even more like not in a like a fucking <laughs> non-consensual way right yeah but like that's what she wanted. She was like, I want you to be more Dom Daddy, right? So she fucking slapped me across the face, and then I became the Dom Daddy. It was crazy. I don't know, man. Dude, when I get slapped in the face, I just want to fight. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 this like is the only reason that, uh, that one chick it worked out is because she uh, we talked about it before, and right. she's like, hey, let me try it. I'm like, all right, whatever, you can try. Yeah. But I had it one chick like, slap me random. I'm like, right. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And then I have some like some homies like the club like they'll slap me in the face or whatever. I'm like, oh, I'm gonna just fucking nut check them really hard. See, like I, I've been requested to like slap people or like punch them, and I'm like, I want, I can't. It depends on who it is, because like I've had some point in the past, and I'm like, oh yeah, I'll hit the fuck out of you. You piss me off. <laughs> like you, yeah, absolutely. I will take my yes. <laughs> But then, like, Leo, on the other hand, I, like, look at his sweet face, and I'm like, ooh, I know you're going to like this so much. Mm. But you're so sweet. Well, like, some guys like, I just, just want to be gentle with him sometimes. Yeah. Well, maybe but, like, he's just a natural time, sub. Oh, he is. Yeah. Absolutely, he is. Oh. And, like, I slap him around a little bit, and he likes it. Like, he, like he, yeah. You put him in leashes and collars and shit? No. I haven't put it on any of my collars or anything like that yet. No pet play yet? No. I'm not into pet play. Really? Great. Okay, I did have a dream one time, actually. And I know this is weird. I had a dream. Okay. And I think in that dream, I got called kitten and I woke up so horny. I was like, okay. Nice. Like noted. Thank you. <laughs> dreams. Like that was a very odd way to find that one out. Yeah. That you have a pet, pay, pet play fetish. Very light. It's like, very, just the name. Okay. You just literally had a dream and woke up super wet and horny. It literally, cause it was like a wet dream, but it wasn't like a pet play dream where I was wearing like a leash and a collar. All I remember is it was just like, a really hot partner. I don't remember if it was male or female. They were just really hot. And I just remember them calling me kitten. Mm. But plugging it in your head. Uh, 
good. kitten ears. Yeah. That's probably what it was. I don't even know. I that's, don't think that's so. That's the most basic, though. Like, yeah, I know, but, you know. Dude, I mean. From a had... dream, it's like, you know, from the Xbox unlock achievement. Oh, yeah, yeah. New kink unlocked. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's how I actually woke up, and it was like achievement unlocked, and I was like. New kink. <laughs> that is a new one. Wow. Did not. And I haven't really talked about that with Leo, because that was during, like, our separation. So now it's just like. Do I drop that little bomb in there being like, you should you should try this nickname, babe. You should, just, you should just have it ready to go as you like dress as a cat or whatever, not like a full outfit cat. <laughs> but, you know. And then just be in the like living room, like pretending to be a cat as he walks in from work. <laughs> no, God. Licking out this of like a... Uh, this man works overnight. Keep in mind. No, he works, just licking like, out of like a bowl. Yeah, 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 this yeah, man yeah. works from like six o'clock at night until four o'clock in the morning. If he came home to me at like five o'clock in the morning acting like a cat, he'd be like... What kind of drugs? What the fuck is going on here? <laughs> like, he doesn't come home at like a normal time, like six o'clock, and it's like, ooh, honey, it's like evening, like after dinner. Like, he comes home at five o'clock in the morning. Do you know how weird it is? I'll be sitting around my living room with all my animals being like, hey, He's babe. Be like, what kind of fucking drugs are you on? <laughs> He's gonna be like, did you, did you eat the chocolate bar in the fridge? And I'm gonna be like, no, baby, I just wanna be your kid. <laughs> like, it's not gonna work. Yeah, I ate too many squares, dude. <laughs> It's not fuck. This is not yeah, working out right. as much yeah. as much as I wanted it to. Yeah, if I was to get off work at that time, and show up home and some chick was like, I'd be like, actually, I don't know how we react. Oh, I would be like, oh, I already know what's. Yeah, up. I actually don't know how I would react because it depends how I had that. I'd be like, that good went. girl. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I mean, usually if I come home late, it's like from the club. You know, I already have all that built up, you know, tension. So I'm like, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, no, he's pretty tired. I he honestly comes home and I'm like, hey, honey, it's like five o'clock in the morning. Want me to cook for you? Mm. So like I randomly like last night I cooked him like a, a what was it I made him a cheeseburger last night nice. I I make this man so much food that man's so blessed I made him like that and a Greek salad to go with it and then like before I left to to, or to Florida I made like fried rice like homemade fried rice nice and then I made him like homemade teriyaki chicken like a homemade glaze and all so you'd be cooking and cleaning damn wifey yeah, material right there much. Oh. Shit. mainly cooking but like yeah he does all the dishes for me he's, oh, he's, you hear that ladies how you want to lock down a man how do you do it cook for him yeah, yeah. And make clean. him so fat he yeah. can't run just make oh. just, just one way to the man's heart is through his stomach yeah no generally when i first met leo like he would make like top ramen like very simple stove things so when we first got together i started making like ravioli with spinach in it with like a like a homemade meat sauce I'd make like shepherd's pie. Dude, I would make him so hungry right corned now. beef and cabbage, like literally anything and everything. Like any, I'd be like, what do you want to eat today? And he'd just say something random. I'm like, okay. And I'd make it for him. Wow. Like there is like all of a sudden random recipes being like, I'm going to make this. And I'd just like serve it up to him. And he's like, you just made this today. Like, did you ever make this before? And I was like, eh, I know how to cook. So like I can make it. Dude, a meal and a blow job. Jeez. That's <laughs> That's ring material. It's heaven right there. That's ring material, bro. Us guys don't ask for much. So that's we really joke, don't ask for much at the all. The joke right now is like engaged to be engaged. Because yeah, we're yeah. like at this point, like we've been together long enough. Like through our separation, we worked out enough of our like independent things. Like might as well just get married now. Like we're not going anywhere. We're pretty much locked in solid. Yeah. So I just got to keep feeding that man good food. I'm, he's mine forever. forever. Easy peasy. Forever. I made this man homemade fried rice. Yo, that's crazy. homemade. I well, I do it all the time because I'm Asian, but I mean, yeah. Yeah, maybe it's an Asian thing. To go. I'm like, that's not that impressive. But the shepherd's pie is pretty impressive. Yeah, that is true. Yeah. I'm like fried rice or whatever. <laughs> shepherd's pie? That sounds complicated as fuck. You know, honestly, that's even more simple than what I do. Is it really? <laughs> yeah. It's like literally vegetables, Potatoes and meat, and that's it. <laughs> that's because we've never had it done for us. For real? Yeah. Fried rice made plenty of times. I'm like, fried rice I, every week? Next time I come over, I'll bring you guys a shepherd's pie. All right. Time I cook yeah, I'll be like, God damn, what is this thing? <laughs> yeah, you, you, I've also made him, like, a crap ton of other things, too, like corned beef and cabbage, nice. or, like, what else have I made him? Like, oh, gosh, I don't even remember, like, all the Dude, different if, things I make him. If, Chicken marsala, yeah. shrimp frava di valo, yeah, or frava diablo, oh, whatever. Oh, oh, my God, stop. Stop. You're making me come my pants right now. You're making me want to put a ring on it. Just from hearing the food. I'm, I'm, I'm coming my pants, bro. To be fair, on the other hand of everything, I cook amazing dishes and then I'm constantly bringing home new animals. Wow. Like we have like a zoo of like 20 animals, I think Jeez. it is now. Jesus. Yeah, like we have like our three dogs, our three cats. I have like, oh God, how many snakes do I have? Um, I have my berm, my ball python. I have like four hog noses, an MBK. So seven snakes. Mm -hmm. And then I have like four leopard geckos, a crested gecko, a bearded dragon. Jesus. I have like a little mini pond I built in our living room. <laughs> like this man just comes home and I'm like, look what I did. 
And he's like, okay, honey. That's nice. <laughs> he's and like, I'm like, and I also cooked. And he's like, ooh, what'd you make? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh man, good thing she. So why hasn't he put a ring on you yet? No, dude, he, he's like, this. good thing she engaged. fucking cooks and <laughs> sucks good wiener. Yeah, and that's why I let her do whatever the fuck she wants. You want to bring home some new shit? She's got to cook and stuff. And I assume it. you mostly stay home too, right? Yeah, I just kind of go out, model, and then I play video games. Like I have my own little like gaming studio upstairs yeah. with the rest of my reptiles. Fucking awesome. So like I just play video games. So he pretty much is just dating a really hot nerd. Mm-hmm. For no reason. It's actually really funny. That's awesome. So like anyone in my modeling life, I tell them about my reptiles and they're like, what the fuck? Mm -hmm. And then anyone in my reptile world that I tell about modeling, they're like, what the fuck? Why yeah. Because they're them? like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Why don't you combine them? <laughs> she should. I mean, like. I think, I mean, I think that'd be a sick We do have photo. models that do that. Very limited models. Though. Yeah. But there's, there will be models that come out with big ass yeah. pythons. Well, like, cause my burn py my Burmese python, she's going to get to 20 feet when she's big enough. Mm. She's probably about like five feet now from how big she is. What do you do with like a reptile that gets that big after a while? Like, do you, do you just keep them forever or like yeah. do you give them to like a sanctuary eventually or does it zoo? I mean, return them back to nature? Fuck no. Okay. One, don't ever return a reptile back to nature. That's <laughs> fucked up. Um, Why is that? Well, okay, one thing, Burmese pythons are actually, like, I know why. <laughs> they're invasive species. Oh, okay. So, like, if you go to the Everglades in Florida, you can find wild Burmese pythons, and they're not supposed oh, to be there. Oh, yeah, so, I like, saw don't the do show. That. Yeah, Same yeah, yeah. thing with, like, ponds and lakes here. You'll mm -hmm. see, like, red ear sliders. Again, mm -hmm. invasive species. Do not, uh, do not dip. release reptiles into the wild. That is evil and cruel and really fucked up. Wait, but don't they come from the forest, though? Not or necessarily. A lot of reptiles that are now sold in stores will either be noted wild caught or if it's captive bred. So a lot of captive bred ones mean that they were literally bred, ra like raised up, and then their babies that so were like, hatchlings became that way. So treat them like a dog. Yeah. So like domesticated dogs shouldn't like, okay. go back in the wild. Like my ball fucked. python, like okay. requires high humidity. Okay. We live in a desert. Uh, That's just great evil and tormenting them because yeah, this is not die. the right climate for them. Gotcha. Like my MBK, she would probably be okay here. However, a Mexican black king snake is not. And or is it native to Nevada? Okay, so, so that's another invasive species where she'll either get hurt because she can't survive here because her food's not here, mm -hmm. or she's going to start breeding with other things, uh, and then it's going to become a whole a whole new problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And typically, people that release a, like a species into the wild, that's normally how that species gets banned from that state. Mm, so like. Mm. Please don't release your reptiles into the wild, guys. We don't want more mandates and stuff. Yeah. Reptiles are already getting like a lot of negative legislature towards them already. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you really don't want to like risk them or their health or like their survival. Well, it's not even that because it'll fuck up the ecosystem too, right? Because they'll yeah. start eating like tortoises and jackrabbits and stuff like that. And then Potentially, that, yeah. yeah. That messes up the ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. So like don't ever do that. I mean, the most responsible thing to do if you have a snake like a Burmese python that gets way too big and you can't continue caring for it, either find someone that has more experience or you can just like uh eat find a sanctuary don't eat them oh my god please don't eat them <laughs> you can find a sanctuary or like some type of zoo that'll take them in <laughs> damn i don't know what to do with this snake anymore i'm hungry huh <laughs> never tried a snake before and jesus <laughs> please don't eat your snake if you get hungry enough you'll eat your fucking snake yeah that that's the, that's the ongoing joke on this podcast yeah. i mean it's not really a joke but like if we start starving as a human race we will eat our pets first guaranteed yeah Probably. Yeah. I mean, it would probably start with like farm animals first before we go to like our typical like yeah, domesticated course. pets. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but like, like save like the yeah. save the world was to like like go to like apocalypse right. Oh like, yeah. Tonight and then like all your reserved food is disappeared. Grocery stores are disappeared. Horses can't would be a hot commodity. I don't think people would ho eat the horses. I would eat the horse. Fuck it. If I was oh, no, I mean, think about it. Apocalypse. Like you can't get like any moving vehicles. Like there's no way to transportation. The only realistic use of transportation at that point would be. A horse. Have you seen? So have why you, would you eat the horses? Well, that would be like the oh. humans. Honestly, I would not put it past humans to eat the horses and then realize depends that. Depends how hungry the person is. Trust me. Yeah. yeah. It depends but like, how if hungry that's the, the only is. mode of transportation, like if you had to if build a shelter and you food. had literally a tree and your vehicle, what are you going for first? I'm going for the. You're, you're going to use the thing that can help get you around before you're going to destroy. But then you're starving. And the only thing you see in front of you is a horse. It, dude, it's if, okay, the it episode the of Last eating. of Us yeah. right now. It's the episode, it is the episode of Last of Us, yeah. I, I feel like the horses would last the longest before anyone would try to eat them. 
like dogs and cats you can't ride those guys they're not gonna do shit for you eat them first no you do like, have all a your point. other animals you do but horses point. horses are, are a tool but like, when, horses but you when can they use die before. you're gonna eat them oh absolutely yeah but when you die like when it dies there's no use to you anymore yeah. yeah the only use that they proceed at any point in the apocalypse is literally transportation and being able to move things for you yeah so this but leads like, to the question that i want to ask are humans omnivores or carnivores or herbivores omnivores we eat everything. We're up to up to up to Like a raccoon. Eaters. Oh. Yeah, because uh, basically, like our stomach acids levels and everything mm -hmm. like that is closest to uh, scavenger birds. Wow, that's believable. Like vultures. Yeah, like vultures and stuff like oh. that. So that our our acid levels like very close to that, and it makes sense. Like back then, if you look back to like uh, um, you know, like caveman times and stuff like that, you know, we try to eat whatever we can, and sometimes it would be like scavenging off dead dead animals and stuff like that. Well, like okay. Humans would have to have like a stomach with high acidity no matter what because we consume all of our meat raw. We don't eat anything. I mean, we eat it cooked now too, but like everything we eat is dead. Mm -hmm. Like we already are intaking dead nutrients and such, right? So like we'd have to have the high acidity no matter what. Like even if we cook it, it's still dead meat. It's not like something fresh that we just like bit into and yeah, started exactly. eating. So like we'd always have to have that high acidity, but like caveman times, absolutely opportunistic. But well, I mean, like if you as take, a society if you take like that, today, yeah. then absolutely omnivores. Yeah, but, but if you take away all the the um, the what is how do I want to put it, freaking uh conveniences that we have, because yeah. mm -hmm. everything's so convenient right now. That's why we're uh, omnivores. But if we were to take all that away from the creation that we ever remade, I think we would go back to being opp opportunivores. But like we would still murder our meals before eating it. We wouldn't like jump onto a, like an, a bird and bite into it and be like, yes, meal. Like I mean, we would we, still we hunt eat, it and kill uh, it and then eat, eat its dead body. We so still like, eat some food raw though, like right off the freaking uh, like yeah, fish Yeah, but like we like wouldn't that. be like jumping in and like biting it as it's still like living and like it's fresh per se, like a wild animal, like a bear catching their meal. Hunters. Like we would still like hunt it and kill it. So it's still just like a vulture eating a dead meal. Yeah, but so, I mean, technically, yeah, it's dead. You're not going to so bite like, into it while it's alive. Exactly. So like Unless no matter like what, a, we'd be opportunistic because like we're literally waiting for the first thing that we can catch and kill. Yeah. So like. It's not the same as like a bear or a cougar or like anything of those like type of hunters. I mean, you know we, what I mean? We could. I mean, if we're really adamant enough, but like, you know, you find a little snake. Just... Shit. Good luck if you want to try that. Mm -hmm. You got to really get a good. <laughs> Snakes have a lot of muscle. <laughs> Do you want to try it? Yeah, let's try it. Fuck it. Let's go. <laughs> Can you bring a snake? <laughs> We'll just yeah, go to Florida. Uh, we'll go to Florida. Yeah, yeah. Apparently, they eat the python. Well, I heard, so I heard the way you could kill a snake is grab it by a tail and just whip it. Yeah, you break its neck. Um, I mean, I mean you can't do it. dislocation is like one of the most humane ways to kill an animal. That's how we do a lot of the culling at my job, actually. Um, and all the bigger ones, like, because we have rats and stuff that we have to kill, like bigger ones that if, we can't know. necessarily use the tongs to like do the cervical dislocation properly. So like as morbid as it is, I make my boss do this one. I can't do it. I, I literally haven't gotten stomached enough to do it just yet. And she's got me past a lot of dark shit so far, but... Like, there are some big ones that we have to take and just smash as hard as possible and just break its head. Fuck. And, like, but that's, like, rats and stuff. Yeah, yeah. So, like, when it comes to snakes, Peter's yes and no, episode. like, you'd be surprised how strong their muscles are. Yeah. Because, like, oh, yeah, uh, Western hog noses, they spend their entire life on the ground, right? So, like, their muscles and their body are nearly as strong as, like, a python. But, like, if you try doing that to a berm or a ball python, the ones that really know to wrap and hold on, yeah, they're you're cool. not going to be successful. Yeah, that. Yeah, they know how to hold too well. Yeah, they're climbing up fucking trees and shit, bro. So I saw one climbing a tree. It was pretty sick. Yeah, it was it's like, actually really cute. Yeah, it was, like, wrapping it up and then, like, just, like... Yeah. Waving yeah, up for some just, shit. Yeah yeah, 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 yeah. It just slowly, like... It's and like a like, slinky. It's, it's like an inchworm. It's really mm -hmm. cute. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's like a slinky. Yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah, a yeah. slinky, yeah. It just keeps bouncing all the way up. It's fucking crazy. I remember holding one that was huge, and that motherfucker was, like... Dude, like he was wrapping around me. I, I was in Vietnam, and they when we have a lot of fucking ball pythons out there, all types of big ass snakes, like literally. When when we went to Thailand, we were trying to find a spot. This Peter's gonna hate this fucking episode. Oh god! <laughs> but we went to Thailand, and Vietnam is like right next door. But those two countries are known for eating snakes, right? So they'll catch cobras, they'll catch pythons and shit like that. And then what they'll do is they'll make like a, a blood soup out of it. It's supposed to be like really aphrodisiac, really good for like libido and stuff like that. Okay. But like it's a drinking meal. So you okay. drink and you eat it and it's basically like cooked snake. And then they basically like milk the, the blood out of the, the snake and then put it in with the meat. And then they mix some like aphrodisiac shit in there. 
that's er, like all types of herbs and then you drink and you eat that and apparently when you go home you fuck the shit out of your wife and you can have tons of kids so that's why a lot of asian countries they do that i mean see like it's worked i'm not gonna lie it makes there's my, uh, plenty of people watery. that like eat snakes and i feel like for me to turn around and be like, oh my God, people that eat snakes, it's the same thing as like if you look at other countries that eat like typical domesticated pets like cats or dogs or things like that. Like yeah. to look at any other culture and be like, how dare you eat this animal because I love it. Mm -hmm. It's so ignorant because there's like cultures where like they refuse to eat cows. Yeah. And like Americans love cows. Yep. Or like refuse to eat pigs, which I can respect that because pigs are low key kind of gross. They are gross. But like there's, there's different cultures that eat so many different animals that like yeah. I will never sit here and be like, you eat snakes? How fucking dare you? Right, right. Because, like, that's silly and so ignorant of anyone to say. It's the same thing when people get mad at, like, what is it, like, China that has, like, the dog eating fest or whatever? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. like, realistically, like, do I find that to be okay? Like, would I eat a dog? Probably not. Right. But, like, am I going to turn around and be like, your culture lets you do this? Yeah, you're How evil. dare you? Like, you're evil, you're a monster. Yeah. Like, because you can look at American culture, <laughs> American culture, right. and literally make these same judgments and accusations at it. So, like, yeah. I mean, I'm not completely blindsided by people doing that. Like Americans eat sharks. Like I remember being in growing up in California, my brother had shark tacos once yeah, upon yeah. a time, like, or my sister eating gator at one point. Like, well, they, they do all... eat snakes here in Florida exactly. and, and down South. Like I've seen plenty of YouTube videos where like these barbecue guys, you know, barbecue gurus, they'll actually go down because like you said, they're invasive, right? So yeah. they'll kill them. They'll get paid for it. And then they take the meat home and then they just make a meal out of it. See, like, I think the only thing I've ever been mortified by and low key kind of judged my sister and I were talking when I was in Florida and she was telling me how, when she was living in Texas, they had like a rattlesnake roundup, mm. which I guess they do that like really often. But mm. the way that she described me was so mortifying that I was like, how do okay, that's, how do do that's it? one thing. So apparently they round them all up, right? And burn them? No. So they have different things. Like you can like peel your own snake skin. So they'll chop off a live snake's head mm. and like let you peel the skin off yourself. Sick. Which is like, that just like, that just sounds a little cruel to me. Like <laughs> I'm perfectly fine. Like I understand snakes can exist. Like, well, it's just like, well, it's mortifying the fact of like people letting children do it. And oh. like people that aren't professionals do it. Like as like an interactive, like, oh, haha, ha, come peel the snake yeah, off. Yeah, yeah. Like that's just like. That's evil. Like, we don't need to, like, use, like, this poor snake. Like, I know it's invasive. I know you don't want it here. Like, it's perfectly fine. Like, let's catch them and, like, like do it, like, properly. Like, mm -hmm. you don't invite someone to the farm to start slaughtering the cows for shits and giggles. Yeah, yeah, that's like, that's up. a little fucked up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, the idea of being, like, we're going to put a convention together. Let kids, or, like, we're going to chop off the heads of snakes for kids and let them peel the bodies. Mm. And then, like, she was also telling me how, like, they'll get, like, buckets of the snake blood and there's, like, an all-white wall and the kids will, like, go put their hands, like, in the blood and, like, put their handprints on the wall. Which again, why are we letting children play with blood? That's mortifying. Fucking like dope. That's it's just crazy. I, I think that's kind of cool. Dude. That's fucking cool. It's like, a guy thing. I mean, maybe. I mean, yeah, it's I probably it's it like a guy any thing. Other yeah. creature, maybe it'd be cooler to me. But like, that just sounds kind of mortifying to like let kids play in like the blood and like peel the snake I mean, bodies themselves and like make it like it, a whole interactive thing. Like, well, I get it's invasive, but like, let's not. The way I see it, like, though, it's just, like... Like, that's just a lot. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's, the, the way I see it is, like, you're teaching them a, a lesson. I mean, a lesson that we don't really need at the moment because we're all very civilized. But it goes back down to being opportunivores, you know? And it's not just opportunivores what we eat. It's opportuni op op any opportunity for that we need for, like, skin, for uh, warmth see, and comfort, you know? Or I feel like, like it's one thing when it's, like, a family educating each other because I'm Native American. Like, yeah. I 110% believe that like you should pray for the animal spirit when you kill it, mm -hmm. which I do every single time I ever go through doing cullings. Like my boss will watch me sit there, like literally like console the little baby as it's doing his little death kicks, like taking its final breaths, like praying for its little like soul and saying, thank you for being a meal. Mm -hmm. Like I'll do that for every single thing I call. And my boss will look at me being like, what are you doing? And I've explained to her, like, this is part of my culture. Like I'm not going to change it. Like I know that they're food, but I'm still going to respect them for their growth and what they're giving to me right now. Right, right, right. So like, I understand the concept of like using the full body and to use the skin and to use everything as a resource. Like being Native American, I can respect that. Right. What I can't respect is making it a fun Sunday activity. Like that's just weird. Like it's like more of a family, a more family thing that's teaching you like this is how we survive. This is what we do. That you find sense. one in the wild. Like it's invasive. This is yeah. how we handle it. Gotcha. But to be like, hey boys, round them up. Let's bring all the kids on down and make it fun. Like yeah. That like that takes away the thought of survival. It takes away the thought of like the use of their soul. It takes away so it takes away their I don't want to say like humanity or like their existence, but I feel like it kind of barbaric. It's yeah, it makes it more into a barbaric thing of like us as humans have to be like this manly, like this is what we do, this is how we survive, rather than Hell yeah. hey, like 
this is the nature. This is our environment. Like this is how we utilize it and grow with it and how we like respect it. Yeah. That makes and like sense as a Native American, like I just don't like the idea of like a fun Sunday activity. Like it should you. be like a cultural thing where like, this is our family doing, this is how we handle it. This is what you do. This is how you use the full body and everything with it. Oh yeah. That makes sense. It comes down to the principles is what you're mm -hmm. doing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I did like when we went hunting for the, the boars and stuff like that, when, uh, uh, um, <laughs> when we went hunting for the boars and stuff like that in Arizona, I did the same. Well, I didn't did it. I didn't pray or anything for the, the thing, but I was like, I did some studying. Like I watched YouTube videos. I was like, I just want this to be a clean shot. I don't want the thing to suffer. I just want to shoot it and be dead. Mm -hmm. And I did, did just it. that. Yeah, yeah I did, did you just, just that exactly that. Yeah, but like, exactly. I know what you're saying. I didn't want, I didn't want yeah. to suffer. I wanted to kill it. I get it. So I can eat it and use its resources. Well, here's here's my whole thing, right? Yeah. I get that there's like the the whole fact of like using the body and everything like that, but also the fact of like, for example, right now in Florida, like you're saying, there's an invasive species, multiple invasive snake species that are in Florida, fucking up, literally, the ecosystem there. So in my eyes, I can see why the whole activity of like let's go and kill these fucking things is required but i also understand the fact of like where you're coming from like it's fucked up but so like i can respect the fact like look they're fucking up the environment we need to get right. them out of here like we need to at least dwindle down a little bit so that we can manage yeah. it and i get that and i respect uh -huh. that but like turning it into a whole like slaughter fest for shits and giggles like that's the part that i'm like and maybe i just have to see one for the one time and really like understand because like there's probably I don't much call more. It, like a cultural thing but i wouldn't necessarily say it's like a does a fun like Sunday activity either? Cause like, I'm sure they obviously something. they do it for a reason. Like yeah. they, and not these things my sister did explain, like they do have like a lot of like rattlesnake stew and like a bunch of different ways that yeah. they kind of brought That's the cool. rattlesnake together and like different usages for it. So they're not yeah. just making it a full on slaughter fest. Let's play in the blood. Right. What but if, it's still one of those things of like, just the idea of making it some like little convention trade to like bring down the family. Let's kill some snakes. Okay. So and I not a, making it so like a, what a if they're thing. making the kids peel the snake so they don't have to hire people to peel the snake so it's free labor but they make it seem like it's fun oh my god dude you're going way too far <laughs> snake what is theory? <laughs> i mean it could be i mean i think from what you explained like usually when they peel it like they have them use it as like a leather for a wall and like little things like that but i'm pretty sure even if you were to peel the snake the day of don't you have to like let the skin dry and all that yeah, stuff yeah, yeah, like yeah. you can't just like no, make but, it into but, a like, wall at that moment and stuff yeah for snakes too i'm, it, I'm sure did they peel it for snakes too or do they just leave the skin on for snakes. no you probably want to take the skin off yeah, yeah. because you want it yeah, for, for snakes food. food so they're like all right kids take off the skin let's make a game out of this I mean, and then I'm we sure take the part and then the stick in the stew no dude what it is is like all right if you're in texas it's probably some type of family yeah belief or something right think about it like kids are, the young boys are fucking hauling around stacks of hay and mm -hmm. feeding the cows and doing shit that's just how it works this is a family thing hey we're doing it you're fucking doing it i don't give a shit if you're gonna be you know if you're if you can't handle some snake blood stop being a pussy whatever See, right? and like if it was one of those things like you were raised on a farm or your family just like dealt with a lot of like yeah. outdoor things and like snakes were on your farm sometimes and you had to protect like your animals and your wildlife then i get it like teach your kids those yeah. lessons but i don't think I just don't, I can't respect the fact of you going to some random thing being like, ah, ha ha, kids, we're going to go do this today. Or come on family. Like yeah. our family outing today is to the rattlesnake roundup. Like I get why they do it. I get what it's for. Like I appreciate that they show the full usage of the snake. It's just one of those intimate things that I, as a Native American, believe that like it needs to be family taught and like as a traditional thing. Right. And like, that's like, that. it's just so hit or miss. I don't know. So, like, so I want to, I want to switch this up. This is going to get a little bit dark, right? So on. you're not cool with this whole slaughtering of fucking animals for no reason, right? How do you feel about the whole women's abortion thing? Ooh. Because I feel like that goes into the same direction. Women are just slaughtering little childless, you know, or okay, well, let's not call them that. Now. <laughs> let's be like, I don't want to call it that. Um, when it comes to like pro choice or like, yeah. What is it? Pro choice or what's the other term? Pro life. Pro life. Mm -hmm. I pro life is just one hundred percent, one hundred and ten percent selfish. I'm sorry. Yeah. Like the idea of pro life is the idea that somebody else will take responsibility for this child if you don't want to. Right. And that's not a guaranteed or like a promise. Mm -hmm. And so, the idea of being pro life, I just could never stand by. I've always been pro choice. Mm. And pro-choice doesn't mean I'm pro-abortion. It just means I'm pro whatever you think is best for yourself. And I've always been that way. Okay. During like COVID, during any type of sickness, during anything, I've always believed in making the best choices for yourself mm -hmm. and for your family. And that's all you have to do. It's mm -hmm. not my job to judge you. It's not my job to say what you should do. It's not my job to make your decision. It's your job as an adult to decide what's the best thing for me 
and what's the best thing for my family for us all to be safe and healthy and have the most success for our future. Right, right. So like if so you're getting born. abortion means doing that, then that's all for you, sis. Like go off. Okay. I've considered getting an abortion before and like it happens. Life right. happens. And until you're in the position to have to make the choice of getting an abortion or not, you don't really get to know how it feels nor get to say on anybody else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cause like years ago when I was with my toxic ex, we got pregnant and we got put into a, a predicament where we had to decide if we were going to abort or if we we're going to keep it. Um, he was heavily on the abortion side and we were dating. Like we had always said, like, if we get pregnant, we're all bored. We're not ready. And we're not doing it. Right. Right. But it wasn't until I got pregnant that I was like, fuck, I'm not getting rid of it. Yeah. Like I'm not doing it. Right. And then I just, it was already a really bad toxic relationship. So my plan was honestly, cause he was working in North Dakota at the time. Cause we had split up and he decided to leave state and go work with his dad for a while. And so when I went to visit him, that's when he got me pregnant. So when I came back, I was living in the apartment alone. Oh fuck. And I was ready to pack up the entire apartment and just leave wow. 110% goes. Cause I was like, I'm not happy anymore. I don't want to be with you. Yeah. I'm going to take my kid and go. Wow. And then unfortunately within like a month or so of being pregnant, I miscarried. Oh wow. So I didn't even get the choice of what to do, but I had to sit there and I mean, keep telling myself like, I'm going to go get like would an abortion. You, would you kind of consider that? I don't, this is kind of fucked up, but would you kind of consider that like almost like a blessing in disguise in a way? Because you didn't Absolutely. have to, you didn't have to make that tough decision of like, dude. Absolutely. You know I mean? But it was definitely a double edged sword. Yeah, for sure. Because going into it, like he kept telling me we're getting it aborted. We're getting it aborted. We're making it aborted. And I just kept being like, yeah, right. we're going to do that. And in the back of my head, I was like, no, I'm, I'm packing up this apartment. I'm leaving. Well, you're I never think... going to know where me and this kid are going. Like yeah. you're, I'm ghosting you. I'm done. Like, I don't want to be with you. You obviously don't want this kid. If you don't want it, I am perfectly fine with being a single mom. I don't need you. I've never needed a man. Like right. I can do anything on my own. My mama raised five kids on her own. I yeah, absolutely damn. can do this on my own. Yeah. Well, I think what it is, is that, you know, that mother instinct yeah. kicked in is like, what happened. Like you don't, you don't understand like the amount of emotions that flood into you and like everything in it. But what I consider like that little thing, like a baby in me, like mm -hmm. at the time, yeah, but not being pregnant, it's hard to say. Like it's that, it's an emotional thing. Yeah, for Cause sure. like there were so many times that I'd sit there being like, all right, we can get it aborted. And I'd sit there and I'd be like, I, I don't believe in the words I'm saying. I can't do it. Yeah. So and then unfortunately I, I miscarried and it just broke a piece of my heart that I didn't even know existed. Yeah. Like it literally, I literally felt like the whole of my heart was just gone. Mm -hmm. Like I had nothing there. And I was like, I've never felt this piece of my heart before. Like it's weird that suddenly like I had this such deep attachment to like my child at that time. And like, it's so, it's just such a wild feeling. Right. And it wasn't maybe until the last couple of years, like finally being with like Leo that I finally have like healed that part of myself. And I finally accept the fact of like, okay, like, if we were to get pregnant, like, I don't think I'd have that same worry. I don't think I'd have that same fear. Like yeah. for like the last maybe four to five years, I've been adamant being like, I never want kids. I never want to go to that feeling again. I never want to miscarry again. Like yeah. it is such a hard feeling going through any of that, that it broke me as a woman. Why was my body not able to do it? Like, why did my body fuck up? Yeah. Like, why did my body not produce like it needed to? Why did my body not protect my baby? Like it needed to like, it turns into such a, a huge mental game with yourself. Yeah, yeah. That like. So would you say like you're more like pro life then because no. of like you went through that? Absolutely not. I'm still pro choice. Oh, okay. Because until you're in that position of having to decide, do I keep it or do I not? Mm -hmm. You're never going to be able to tell someone else to make that decision. Yeah. Because it wasn't until I was put in that position that I was like, do you think it's, wow. Do you think that decision is, is, should be made by both parties? Or do you think it's more of a woman's no. choice? I think it's more of her choice. Like, do I think the man deserves to have a say? Yeah, but your body is not the one going through the changes. Mm -hmm. Your body is not carrying the baby. Your body is not going through all this stuff. Right. So like, I get the whole 50%, like you were also a part of it, but I feel like it's also your job to respect her. Right. So like she's the one that has to carry all of it. And not that carrying a baby is a burden whatsoever, but she's the one that has to carry the weight of the child, has to carry right. like the postpartum depression, has to carry like not ex acknowledging that her body's not going to go back to normal. Yeah. Acknowledging that once you're a mom, like there's a difference between being a mom and being a person. Like a father doesn't lose his identity when he has a child. Like you still get to be you. Once you become a mom, you're a mom. Like there's, there's more of a stigmatism behind being a mother than there is being a father. So there's a lot more weight and pressure put on a female side that I feel like as a man, 
you have to understand and respect that more. And like, do I believe that there's fucked up situations where like a female doesn't tell a man like I'm pregnant and then mm. they abort it? Like, absolutely. I feel like a discussion should be had. Mm -hmm. Like if you can make such a bold decision mm -hmm. and such an indefinite decision, I feel like it should be at least discussed or not even discussed, but at least stated rather than like, haha, surprise motherfucker. Right. So it's, it's a, it's a rock and a hard place. Honestly, like it's really. So if, if let's say you got into that, whole situation where you're like oh i don't want to let him choose this or whatever right do you do you think it's fair for him to walk away if he says hey i don't want absolutely okay i don't think anyone should be forced to be a parent yeah like if you and your partner decide that you want to have the kid and he doesn't then he shouldn't be forced to stay mm. and he shouldn't be forced to play child support if you knew they weren't going to be there right like same thing with me and my ex like if i didn't lose my child right and he already made it obvious he didn't want to be there I would not come from for child support. Like I said, I was going to take my kid and leave because he didn't want it. Mm. So like I was not going to force him to be a parent if he wouldn't want to. Yeah. Like me keeping the baby and not aborting it would have been 100% on me and I would not have forced him to stay. Well, bringing this up, the reason why I wanted to bring this up was because <clears throat> I just recently read an article that stated that Facebook and Google is now literally sending information from like your private messages and stuff to the government so they can track down who is trying to get abortions. Really? Yeah, wow. they are trying to stop it. It's crazy. See, I just I don't think it's anyone's place. Like I said, like it was probably like one of the most a, difficult decisions I had to sit there and try to face. Like, am I going to go through and have this baby, or am I going to get it aborted? Yeah. Can I go through with getting an abortion? Like, there is so much. There's so much emotion. I feel like people don't realize like the difficulties of having to make that choice. Mm -hmm. That like the fact that anyone thinks it's such a black and white thing. Like it's not. Like children and pregnancy and all that stuff is not a black and white thing is should the woman have 100 percent choice should the man have a say should should abortion be legal like it's not black and white yeah and that's why i don't believe i don't want my answers to be black and white either like right, right, i don't right. think i'm a solid yes or no right like i'm not pro-choice and i'm not pro-life i'm pro whatever you think is best you're a pro opportunist yeah <laughs> <laughs> pro opportunist like, yeah. It's, it's your job as a human to decide what is the best thing for you and your survival yeah. and the best thing for you and your family of course so if having a baby is going to hurt you financially because you can't support it yeah and bringing the baby into having no support like that's not fair to them yeah or like if you think you can do it and it's not someone else's job to say you can't do that right now you don't have the money for it yeah. like it's no one say to say anything mm -hmm. So like, you're the only person that's going to know if you can handle it. Yeah. You're the only person that's going to know if you should do it. Yeah. Whether or not everyone thinks it's a bad idea, it's not their choice. It's your life and your choices. Solid. So like, it's not a black and white answer. It's not. It's like, not. Like, whether, and it's also like, like my toxic relationship, should he have had a say? I mean, we discussed it, but at the end of the day, was I going to let him have the final say? Absolutely not. Yeah, it was my true. body. It was my child. Uh -huh. And regardless of what he felt like he wanted... I was still going to make the executive decision because yeah. he wasn't going to sign me up for an abortion. Yeah. And even if he did, I would have packed my shit even faster than he could have said anything to me. Yeah. So like there was no one going to force that decision on me, no matter how badly he would have berated me to do it. God made that decision for you though. Unfortunately. So he was like, you ain't ready. Or fortunately. Yeah. Fortunately. Could you imagine you'd be fucked? But anyways, what were you going to say about <laughs> the whole thing about Facebook? Oh, fuck, man. That's a huge invasion of privacy. Dude, I mean, it's what, crazy, dude. I mean, that breaks into your HIPAA rights, doesn't it? Like, I'm surprised. No, no, no. Because when you when you download Messenger and Facebook, it actually tells you to agree mm -hmm. to certain terms. And you agree. To, people don't read those fucking terms of services. Like, See, it's almost like the joke. TikTok. Like, what's... Mike, do you remember the episode of... um What was it? South Park, like, years ago. It was an Apple episode where they were, like, talking about, like, reading the terms and agreements. Oh, it was yeah, a, yeah. It was a... It was a, a lot of shows. It was an episode shows. making fun of Apple, essentially. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it was saying something about, like... And the like the disclosure essentially was giving like your child away or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was some wild story about like read the terms and services. And South Park made a whole episode on yeah. this about Apple. Yeah. So they, it's really but, funny that like they've slowly started slipping in things and everyone knows that stuff. Yeah. I'm I'm sure. But But there's like like literally if you read TikTok's terms of services, they literally have access to your phone and your camera. Literally. That's when, so wild. when when you when you go on social media like Instagram or anything and you post photos and you open up your fucking camera and you can see everything on your camera roll they have access to that that's so wild no you know how, if you have like yeah. nudes or sex videos they can see it if, if someone wanted to come and like access your shit from that company and they want i mean Man, they don't see some good shit i mean but, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> but what i'm saying is like if they wanted to come and do that i'm sure they don't have time to do that but if someone wanted to take advantage and go that way they could because you've agreed to the terms and service of like hey let me access your shit mm -hmm. so like 
on my phone personally, I don't let any apps ha have access to that. I, I do the select photos. So I will select each photo I want to post and I have to do that every single time, which is super inconvenient, but I don't want anybody to have access. I have pictures of my kid in there. I never post my kid on social media. Good. You know what I mean? There's probably like a couple of old photos on there every once in a while, but like I rarely, if anything, just once a year, maybe Matt, that's it. I mean, yeah. the idea of posting children on social media has become so incredibly scary. Cause like, just like we were talking about earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Criminals not going to get away with shit anymore. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the amount that criminals are also a way to allowed to get away with from simple little things of like, like I've been reading articles about like not putting like family stickers on the back of your car mm -hmm. or not putting like, oh, cause you like military wife and stuff on the back of your car. Because then like, what if your husband's like not home mm -hmm. because he's serving somewhere? Mm -hmm. I mean, like so you're people, giving people yeah. like all these targets they are being like, like a uh, honor student stickers from like different schools. Like now you're telling people where your kids are going to school. Right. Like there's little things like that that are adding up yeah, now. You make that yourself like, a target. Like I, I exactly. told my girlfriend, like when she got her car, she wanted like that bling license plate, you know, and shit. And I was like, fuck no, please. No girly shit on your car. No bling license plate. That makes you a fucking target. You don't want to let pe random people know that a woman owns this car. A woman drives this car. Cause they're going to follow your ass home. It doesn't make sense. Don't do that. So she's like, you're right. I see girls now all the time. They put like, you know, where, you know, uh, um, you know, the kid's photo or they put like a bling, like diamond princess even, or whatever. As much as cool as it would be to put like my own social medias on my car. I absolutely refuse. Yeah. Cause God forbid like a fan or like yeah, some someone that like wants to like follow me or meet me in person or something like that finds a car that has that on it. Not even I, if, if some guy was like, oh my God, you're, you're at a grocery store and he's like, dude. Like something just takes over his body and he becomes a fucking weirdo and he just follows you out and he's like, oh, dude, I'm following that fucking. I mean, knock on wood, I haven't had that happen yet. Yeah, but. Um, but God forbid, because yeah. like putting my social media on the card, then that links them to everything. Like I recently just had to make my personal like Instagram page private. Nice. Because of how much traction from my modeling page, people go and follow my personal one. Mm -hmm. So I started removing followers on my personal one because I won't even post on there anymore. Nice. Like I won't do photo dumps on there anymore. I won't share anything any on it anymore. Like I'm still going through all of my followers to remove people that I don't know. Yeah. Because it's all my personal stuff. Like it's my relationship. It's my family. It's it's everything there. Well, like they, I won't even post pictures the... of my nephews or anything like yeah. that. Like I won't even repost when my best friend posts like my godson. Mm -hmm. I hardly even repost him unless I'm in the video with him. Mm -hmm. I will not repost a picture of him. Well, they have the um the close friends only thing. Yeah. Where... I don't even care. I don't care for close friends. Really? I won't even do that. Really. I just there's something about it. Like I don't. I'm not going to go through all of my followers and pick and choose who should see my stuff. If you're on that account, then yeah. absolutely you should already be a close like, friend. Yeah, you should already. Yep. That like on my, my modeling page, I'll put like photographer friends and like other model friends that I'm close with into close friends mm -hmm. and stuff. So like the brands that follow me and all that stuff that yeah, I work they with, they don't need to see that my silly little bullshit comments. Right, but right. when it comes to my personal page, like that's where I post my relationship and my life updates and all that big stuff, like where I really talk about myself. Right, right. And like, Unless I'm willing to post that onto my modeling page, then people from my modeling page don't need to see that personal story about me. Makes sense. Not really getting into that. People don't realize how big of a target they're putting on each other on their backs, you know? Like even like back um, even if, if you take the same route all the time sometimes, like some people don't even think about that. Like, you know, like you go to a grocery store and go back home or you go to work and back home, you take the same route all the time because it's just the quickest route. What if you have like a, you know, some creep that wants to follow you? He knows exactly what route you take because you take the same route every day. You know, but it's like little things that you could do. But yeah, people just, people incriminate themselves so easily on social media. True. People make themselves such a big target on social yeah. media. Yep. It's ridiculous. I mean, I mean, we've gone through numerous tests with our, our social media stuff. We have friends who are in the security sector and they've taught us how to take control and like basically like watch what we're doing on the yeah. internet, what information we're putting out there. Cause and it like, can be yeah. easily tracked back. And how easy is some shit to get hacked? Yeah. Like there's people like on TikTok, it's like a super little joke where kids will take like a screenshot, of, like someone's house, like inside, like where mm. you're seeing, right. And they'll find your pinpoint location oh, yeah. based off of one screenshot. Yeah, one, one picture, like they just took a freeze frame yeah. from like the video. Yeah. There's an AI that does that. You can actually pay a monthly service to track anybody. Like literally I can take your profile picture. Let's say like, um, I don't know, you were on the strip at one time. I can take a your profile picture, upload it on there, and it will show me every photo that's ever been there, and it'll pinpoint exactly where you're at and everything. And that's all done through AI. There's also another AI app that you have, I believe you have to pay for that you can uh, you put in your information, all that stuff, and your picture, and it can find anything and 
all every picture that anyone taken of you. Yeah, yeah. Any picture, even yeah. if you didn't take the picture, someone took a picture of you. It'll find it, even if you're in the background. No, it'll. See, I, I do not fuck with yeah. AI. I'm sorry. Even yeah. when that stupid AI art thing came out, as cool as it was, I personally went to different artists that I really liked, being like, hey, "Can I just commission you for a piece?" Like, yeah. I don't feel right going to an AI and uploading my photos and all that silly stuff. Because one, it's stealing art from actual artists that deserve love yeah, and commissions. True. And then two. Why would I just hand an AI over my shit? I'm sorry, I'm not doing it. Yeah. I'm not doing it. Like it just Everything seems like is. a fake, like a setup for us to be like, oh, hee hee. It is. Here, AIs take our photos for shits and giggles. Have all these photos of me. Make me a million different prints and a bunch of different styles so that I can be like, oh, look how cool I look like this. But jokes on you because yeah. now it's drawn you in every single different way to identify you no matter how many ways you change yourself damn you know people like there's so many things that go into this they're like okay this ai can now picture you with red hair with yeah. no freckles with green eyes yeah. with lighter skin mm -hmm. with like all these different features so no matter how much you try to manipulate yourself now there's no way to hide that's true you, you've given every single way you just gave yourself away yeah we've given ourselves away already though with mm -hmm. the filters yeah, absolutely. So the filters, the filters to change your face, everything. Like, what do they do? They're scanning your face literally. No, every... you got to think about it even further back than that. Your thumbprint on your phone. Oh, yeah. Yep. And then your face de yeah, detection. Dude. See, like, there's little things yeah. that I've just, like, admitted. Like, okay, autofill, mm -hmm. I do. Like, yeah. filters I yeah. use. But, like, when it comes down to willingly just being like, all right, Mr. AI, take my photos, take my information, like, show me all the stuff you can find. Like, that just literally hands the AI is like the keys to your life being like, here's my ID print. Have fun. What were you saying about um, the social IDs? Oh, so uh, a game, uh, Metal Gear Solid. So whoever played Metal Gear Solid, Metal Gear Solid fans, yes, I'm the same thing. But uh, <laughs> there was uh, one scene that uh, they were saying like, so AI has been out for years already. Long it's time. the military's had control mm -hmm. over it. Uh, now it's out to the public, right? So now public's getting used to it, blah, blah, blah. Now they're figuring out, like, you can imitate people, you can imitate voices, you can imitate this. So now it's going to get to a point where it's going to be hard to tell who's an actual human and what's AI, correct? So the government released this. Now there's a conspiracy theory. This has been released to the public now because now, you know, they're trying to do, like, another conspiracy theory, one world order and all this stuff. So what they're trying to push now is... Oh, uh, well, because of all this AI and stuff, we don't know who's real human or who's not. We're going to have to create a social ID. So now you're going to have to register yourself as a human, basically. And the way you can access your bank accounts, access anything is going to be, you know, like you yourself. That's going to be like a, literally the government's going to have every information about you. And they're like, all right, this is a real human. This is an AI. So basically, it's like those chip tags that they've been talking about for years. Conspiracy theory, you know. Yeah, they basically want you to ID yourself because they think. Because think about it, everything that's happening, they're making like Biden videos mm -hmm. with AI and they're saying like, what was it, like a nuclear bomb? Yeah, they were saying they were going to World War Three or something. Yeah, like and I was like, yeah. whoa, like this wasn't really Biden. But if people didn't know that was AI, it, it would cause some serious fucking yeah. problems. Right? I mean, they had one with, uh, uh, what is it? Uh, what, if they, what if he did say that and they're just covering it? With I mean, you don't know at this point. Yeah, you don't know. At this point, you don't know. Anything that po they say Putin can say could be right or wrong too, you know? That's true. Like there was one with, uh, uh, what, Zelensky, with uh, the guy from Ukraine, uh, the yeah. president from the Ukraine yeah. he was saying uh something about uh, we're gonna go to war and then the U.S. is gonna send their kids into battle and the kids are gonna be bleeding and dying for us basically and shit oh, wow. like that he could actually say that or that could have been AI who knows right you don't know so and it's like, like it's and it's basically just uh this AI thing's released to the public because it's a way for them to social ideas and to be able to keep track of everyone's action so we can be controlled and by that by doing that because you're gonna have to access your bank account and stuff like they can freeze your accounts like look up what they have to top g yeah you know whatever you think about are it are you familiar with top g no andrew the tates tate? the what andrew tate the tates okay please, so, please but no don't. anyway oh no whatever andrew tate whatever you whatever you have <laughs> feelings of him look what they did to him they froze his bank account they blocked him from uber he can't use airbnb he was literally locked out from everything. And now they have him in jail. Now they have him in jail. Now with the AI and, and we now, get social ID. I'm not ID. he deserves it. No, but I'm, I'm not yeah, saying See, but you're, you're targeting what him and I'm talking about what happened to him. This what happened to him is absolutely shitty. But, but this could happen to anyone now to when AI fair, gets relaxed. He released. wasn't in America when he got arrested. But Two, he was yeah. breaking laws in yeah. that country. And the reason he got caught was because he was already running from the police and they figured out where he was by a pizza delivery box, which mind you was which, another which, fucked up thing. Wait, that's a whole nother thing. Cause what is it like? We've, what, we've already deciphered that it's actually that's all it, of that is actually fake. It wasn't a pizza delivery box. What was it? It wasn't like some pizza place or and something like. When stuff. you fly into a country, 
You have to report that you're there. <laughs> they already knew he was there. They just were waiting. Well, no, he was living there already. He wasn't. He yeah, had so, several houses there. Yeah, so they knew he was there. It wasn't because the pizza box. Because no. when you fly into country, no matter who you are, we thought you it was to, that too. But yeah. it wasn't that. I didn't listen to the story. Yeah. I just thought I was in jail. Was like, yeah, well, well, here, motherfucker. Well, well, here's the problem. Is like, but I mean, regardless, like, regardless of who it was, like. All of those issues still align with like freezing his bank accounts and blocking him yeah, from using any type bad. of services like, and, and making him suck to the fact that yeah. he had to oblige to the government. Yeah, because like, listen, like, everything he was saying, he's like, I'm untouchable, basically, right? That's mm -hmm. what he was trying to portray. Like, I'm untouchable. You can't do this. You can't do this. And, the you know? like, and I moved fuck. to Romania because it's corrupt and I can pay them off, blah, blah. What happened? No one is safe. No one is yeah. safe. No one is safe. It, no matter it, how well, much. I mean, when you sit there and you go viral and you're talking shit about this place is so corrupt, I can get away with whatever I want. It's going to turn into, oh, really now? Like, yeah. we're going to make an example out of you. Of course. So, like, do I feel like it was right what they did? Absolutely not. But do I feel like he put a target on his back and, like, highlighted the fuck out of himself? Of course Absolutely. He did. Like, he set himself up for that. Yeah. Like, do I feel bad for him? No. That's like me running out of the street being like, Yo, I'm not wearing my seatbelt. Like, I'm not doing this. I'm breaking all these laws. No one can stop me. And then a cop hearing me being like, you did what now? But like, see, you're, you're incriminating yourself. That's the thing, though. Like, he, all that is to prove a point that no one is untouchable. Yeah. And the moment they roll out these social IDs with the AI, everyone's going to be literally under the control of one government. Absolutely. So whatever they want you to fucking do, you're going to have to do. It's basically going to be a communist. Yeah. For real. They're, they're going to be like, oh, don't worry, we're going to use this like, to protect you, and we're going to use this to keep you safe. What does every person say that that tries to manipulate you? Don't worry, it's going to be good for you. You know, you're not going to have to worry about this anymore. You're not going to have to worry about this anymore. I'm going to keep you safe. Just come to daddy. Come over here. Yeah, yeah, Let me come keep to you daddy. safe. Dead. Pretty but, much. And I, it's a whole fucked up slippery slope, and I really hope that society can finally, like, band together and realize, like, hey, guys, like, whether or not you're, like, on the left side or the right side, like we can come together and realize like there, this is a slippery slope and it's wrong. Mm -hmm. And like, that's the only thing I, I genuinely and truly hopeful for the future. Cause I wouldn't necessarily say that I'm like hard left or hard, right? Like I'm pretty solid in the middle of like, just do the right thing. You know what I'm also thinking? I, I feel like we're not getting the, the actual AI. No. Yeah. We're only uh, getting like 10%. No, I don't think it's actual like self-aware or anything like that. I think it's just gathering all the information it can and it answers and by gathering all the information it can. Yeah, I don't think it's like, you know, because when you, it's artificial intelligence, means it should be able to uh, think, learn and grow, learn and, like, and grow and all yeah. that stuff. Mm -hmm. But it's not because it's still controlled in a way. Because yeah. even when you try to ask it certain things, like, oh, sorry, I can't answer it this way. So you have to like word your way. Basically, you're giving it commands for it to answer you. No, I way. mean, it's a computer system that's generated to give you specific answers with a specific way of questioning it per se. Dude. So if you don't ask ask it in the formula that it knows how to answer, then it's not going to be able to formulate that answer for you. It's still being controlled 100% because I've tried to trick AI. I've asked it certain things where I'm like, all right, this is going to trick it, right? Mm -hmm. It limits itself. It fucking says, oh, we cannot answer this question, blah, 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 blah. Please refer back to our company, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, exactly. I'll ask it, who created you? Won't answer. Yeah. I'll ask it all types of shit. Dude, I'm telling you right now, they only give you what they want to give you. Because exactly. imagine if the government gives you 100% access to AI, how much shit you can do. But do you know how mortifying it is with AI in general? Like, when it comes, like, there's, like, this is a stupid thing when it comes to humanity that frustrates me so much. Like, there's so many amazing things that are so natural that we can still, like, discover, yeah. like, elements or animals or the deep sea or even space. Yeah. But instead, we're sitting here playing God. Yeah. Like, humans are such fickle little creatures that only decide to want to play and make the most powerful thing possible. And, like, truly, like, an AI is a god. You're, you're yeah. creating an endless creature or an endless entity, essentially, that's never going to die, mm -hmm. that doesn't need any, like, life to live, per se. Like, it doesn't need food. It doesn't need substance. It doesn't need daylight. It doesn't need that's anything. It's a, it's a program that you've created that's going to endlessly grow and outsmart you. Yeah. Like, I don't know if and you guys have heard about, like, the, destroyed. you know, the pictures. They have to, like, pick which one. Like, they have to redo those every, like... I think the thing I was just reading the other day was like every three years because computers have figured out a way and have grown with them so quickly mm. that like they can solve them faster than humans now. Yeah. So every like three to five years, I think they have to completely redo the structure of it yeah. so that humans can still be smarter than the computer. The deeper we go with this, when are humans going to turn around and realize like it's we're simply playing yeah. God now? Yeah. Like it's no longer doctors that are playing God anymore. Mm -hmm. Like it's scientists and computer engineers. But it's been like that. Because you're creating gods. Well, it's the nerds. Yeah. Fucking it, nerds, man. It comes. Oh, 
I like the nerds. The nerds rule the world and they control the world. I, Sorry, I, nerds. We I love you. Please don't you give nerds. us bad chips. Oh, dude, they're all the nerds that are watching our fucking podcast. Oh, yeah, we do have a bunch. When can we no longer outsmart computers? I mean, I think computers are outsmarting. Yeah, 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 for but sure. But, like, it is. And then the think, general public. Yeah, the general. Honestly, <laughs> and then the lack of people going to college to continue the strides because of how much, like, college, like, debt people go into now, like, People are going into less lucrative careers that take a lot more education because it's too expensive. So now we're creating a society that's too smart for itself. I think what people are doing, they're just being fucking lazy. They we're don't, we're they, inevitably building our own end. We're yeah. creating a society that's too dumb yeah. and creating something that's too smart for us. So eventually we're going to hit this plateau of computers are too smart for us. And we as humans are too dumb to learn anymore. <laughs> the computer's so going to be like... Damn. Generally, she's like, got a good point though. I does. didn't think about it like that, but eventually we're yeah, not yeah. gonna be able to outsmart the computers anymore. Well, so when I mean, are humans gonna take a step back and realize there's other marvelous things in this world that we can explore and create and enjoy before we have to start divulging into the more like technology? Yeah, I, like I when is enough going to be enough? We're gonna become pets to the AI. I don't think honestly. The AI honestly, is gonna I don't be think, like, oh look at this little human, so cute. Well, like think about the AIs that they built that made their own language with one another that had to get shut down. Well, that was years ago. That like they even Sophie and what was the other one? But regardless, once they deciphered the language, it was literally talking about killing all humans. Yeah, yeah. Like, if two AIs already could connect, make their own separate language, and they're already shit-talking humans, like, all you have to do is give a computer Wi-Fi, and that will show it every single shitty little thing that humans have ever done. Whether or not you're on the side of history that stands by the winners or stands by the losers, like, humans are evil and absolute monsters nonetheless. And so when you make a robot that has to look at analyze and take the emotional IQ or takes no emotional IQ to understand that good and bad has to exist to co has to coexist. Right. Then you're going to have something that purely looks at us in a negative spotlight and purely sees us as a parasite on this planet. And truly when the way that humans are going, we are that way. Yeah. Well, I mean, they, that's I why I say we're playing God at this point. Like I don't before think it was doctors that were saving humans lives. That yeah. the idea behind a doctor was like, if this person was supposed to die and God was saying, this is their time to go, like it's their time to go. And that was playing God at that one time. Yeah, right. That makes sense. But now we're creating these things that are going to outsmart us that are going to outlive us. They have infinite knowledge compared to us because they have access to the Wi-Fi. literally attached to their brain yeah. that can literally decide things in a matter of seconds. Maybe that's why Elon's trying to do the, maybe that's why Elon's trying to do the Neuralink. I think fucking man, it, it's bad. Well, that Elon's we trying it. to do a Neuralink. Dude, think uh, about Microsoft how, dude, trying look, to do if you saw Thor Art Online, oh. don't do Neuralink. That's just watch that one fucking dude. anime. You don't you'll never want to do that shit. Dude, I'm telling you right now, AI is bad for us. It's too early right now. Mm -hmm. Dude, look at how like it's been released since what like like a year ago maybe and how much shit it's already caused. Like we've seen way too many fucking movies where robots end up killing the human race and that's what's going to probably end up happening. But see like We're that's what they slain. say Hollywood completely they say what happens in Hollywood first only gets us comfortable with the idea of what could happen in the future. Exactly. So like I Robot, for example, that movie came out, what, 2010, 2011? Absolutely mm -hmm. icon of a movie. But like to think that that's Terminator. not the reality. Terminator. Exactly. The Terminator is no, another that came in the 90s. Did you know they actually made a, a metal the metal figure? be able to it was, i think it, i think it was combined with ai or something but it was able to basically like the liquid from terminator mm -hmm. they made one a little lego guy out of it and he was able to go melt down go through a cage no shit form back up and then go back through the cage i'm like yo that's oh, this is terminator crazy. right here right here that's crazy but see like now i don't know if it was real or not but yeah i mean i would hope not yeah i'm hoping not but, but shit nowadays you never know man. i mean crazy. to be fair that takes the signs of like nature there because like butterflies and like caterpillars like a caterpillar literally melts itself down to a goo yeah. eats its own brain practically but still can maintain the memories going into a butterfly even though it turned itself into a goo and cast and it's cocoon right mm -hmm. so like it's simply taking organic like more eh, metamorphosis right and then applying it in a technological sense i mean you like can it's say feasible humans and it's like possible that. right but you can say humans are like that too because we start as goo in an egg <laughs> True. And then we become a human. But we don't so. transform from like a, like well, a baby to well, a goo to an adult. Well, like we don't have that larva well, cycle. Well, if you think about it, when we die, what happens to our body? We start to decompose. So mm -hmm. it, it may not happen in that our lifespan, but it does happen. It's the process of it, right? Mm -hmm. We start off as goo and then we live our life. And once we die, we start to decay and we go back into the earth and it's a circle of life. All right, guys, that concludes our episode of Waku Radio. Thank you for watching. 
And hopefully we'll be back tomorrow with the AI, you know, the <laughs> live, you know, who knows, who knows. But don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, hit the notification button, comment something below. You hate us, you love us, don't matter because we're all going to be dead. Don't forget to like us on uh, or follow us on TikTok, Instagram, YouTube and Spotify. And thank you. Uh, giraffe for coming <laughs> onto the podcast today. Yeah, absolutely. Follow me on Instagram at giraffes go meow, Twitter at giraffes go meow. Everything. <laughs> Literally anything and everything. Just look me up at giraffes go meow and I guarantee you'll find me. Uh, link in bio on my Instagram. Hey. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Uh, hit up my cash app, dollar sign giraffes go meow. Nice. I know, iconic name. It makes it easier for everything. Hell yeah. Um, but That's yeah, it. just show me love on all those and I appreciate it. Awesome. <laughs> Thank you for coming on today. Absolutely. Life of a hustler. Check me out. Uh. Life of a hustler. You see me on the road. I'm in hustle mode. Real estate mode.